What's up guys, this is your favorite fanfic YouTuber, the fanfic majesty, and welcome to another amazing video. You can follow me on Patreon for exclusive stories. 5 Co Chapter 81. News about the death of Surgeon Luo. East Blue Windmill Village. Let's toast to Luo Tae. Luo Tae is so handsome, as expected of our East Blue man, he is already at the limit of his rank with just one move. Akamashi. What are you celebrating? Are you celebrating that a big pirate has emerged from our village? Or are you celebrating that a pirate defeated the siege of three admirals? The old village chief stood aside with a cane? Hey, village chief, don't be so serious, come on, drink some wine to soothe your throat. The village chief took the bottle, gulped down two sips, wiped his mouth and said, shut up, anyway, you can't do this. However, Makino interrupted and said, village chief, I see you look so happy, obviously you are also happy for Luo Te. The village chief blushed and turned his face away, nothing. Ha ha ha, Makino, is there any news about Luo Te? At this time, a voice sounded outside the noisy tavern. Bang! Then came the sound of the tavern door being kicked open. Makino helplessly cast his eyes to the door, and saw Luffy running in. Luffy muttered. Let me see, let me see. She handed the newspaper in her hand to Luffy. Luffy looked over and over for a while, and said, Kakui, Luote's partners are also very strong. After saying that, he unconsciously clenched his fists, but I won't lose to you, I want to find partners who are stronger than you. New World, Dressrosa. He he he, ha 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 ha, Luo Te. Are you a brat who doesn't know the height of the world, or are you as arrogant as your name? In the King's Highlands, a pink figure held a newspaper with an indescribable expression on his face. If you want to overthrow the world, it's more complicated than you think. Even rocks couldn't achieve this goal. Will you follow in rocks' footsteps? He opened his arms, he he he, this world has become more exciting. New world, Wanokuni, Onigashima. Kaido took a huge wine gourd and poured a few sips of wine into his mouth, throwing the newspaper in his hand on the ground. Ha ha ha, Luo Te, just a little ghost, really thinks he is a big shot? After saying that, he picked up the maze beside him and smashed the stone beside him. Ha ha ha, you are still too young. Kaido actually cried while saying this, like a schizophrenic patient. Woo woo woo, I'm so lonely, there is no one who can fight, who can kill me. Why is it so difficult for me to simply want to die? Grand Line, Paradise. At this time, Alabasta has become lush and green, no longer as yellow sand as before. The weather is no longer hot, and it has become a city with spring all year round. A girl with blue hair stands on the city wall, and a breeze blows her hair and makes it dance in the wind. The girl held Luo Te's bounty order and murmured, Should I go on an adventure with you? Are you still unwilling? When will you come back? I can only work hard to build Alabasta so that you can have a place to stay when you return. However, two figures were sneaking behind the wall. King, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, King, do you think our princess has fallen in love with Lord Luo Te? What should we do? A curly-haired flat-faced uncle said to King Cobra. Cobra nodded, yes, there are many beautiful women around Lord Luote. I don't know where Vivi's status will be by then. However, his expression did not seem to be worried. Ikaram tilted his head to look at the king, and asked curiously, King, aren't you worried? Cobra turned his head to look at Ikaram, his eyes full of stars, wouldn't it be solved if Luote introduced a few beauties around him to me? Ikaram slapped Cobra, you lecherous old man. Revolutionary Army Headquarters, Baldigo. Dora Gazan, I remember when I told you about Luo Te before, you just glanced at him briefly, why are you so concerned about him now? A man in a cloak and goggles looked at Long with some curiosity. Long put down the newspaper and walked slowly to the city wall. The strong wind blew away Long's cloak, revealing the scar on his left face. Luo Te is indeed worthy of attention now, but I am more curious about Nico Robin. The man was puzzled when he heard this, Nico Robin? Is it the orphan of Ohara? What's special about him? Long turned around and said, Ha ha ha, if Nico Robin can help us, we will be close to victory. Long then ordered, tell someone to prepare the boat, I want to go to the paradise. The man stood up and replied, yes, then he asked, are you going to find this Luote group? Long laughed and nodded. For a time, the reputation of Luote's group has set off a storm on the sea. The reputation is also mixed. Of course, after the packaging of the world government, most people are afraid of Luote's group and want to avoid them. The first is that the word, pirate, is a bad guy in the cognition of ordinary people. Even many families rely on, go to bed quickly, or the pirates are coming, to coax their children to sleep. The second is that most people in this world don't use their brains to watch the news. Whatever the news says is what it is, and they never consider whether the report is true. But in the minds of many pirates, they are all very afraid of Luote pirates, and no one wants to meet an opponent like Luote. Fortunately, Luote pirates has not shown much ambition at present. On the Skybreaker, everyone was mentally prepared for the bounty in the newspaper reports. After a short excitement, they all went back to practice. They knew that the next place to go was a dangerous place, and they needed to have enough strength to deal with the storm. 
Luo Te sat alone on the deck, still holding the newspaper in his hand, flipping through the back. The newspaper spent nearly three pages to report on the incident of Luo Te's group. It was not until the fourth page that Luo Te saw a huge headline on it. A surgeon born in White Town. Who is he? And why is he an enemy of Marine? Seeing this title, Luo Te's eyes lit up. White Town? Could it be? He quickly opened the folded part of the newspaper, and what came into view was a big picture. The picture showed a man wearing a moderate dotted hat, carrying a knife on his shoulder, and a heart shaped tattoo on his chest. Luo Te recognized him at a glance. This was Trafalgar Law, the death surgeon who appeared in Sabodi Archipelago with Luffy and was also known as the 11th Supernova. He raised his eyebrows and thought for a while, Surgeon, it seems that he has to go to West Blue before going to New World. Chapter 82 Arrival at West Blue An abnormal cloud was floating over the Grand Line. Other clouds were floating in one direction, but this cloud was like a rebel, moving in the opposite direction. However, there were four people on the cloud at this time. They were Luote, Nami, Linger and Robin. Originally, Luo Te planned to go to West Blue alone, after all, he just planned to meet the death surgeon. However, after so many days of in-depth communication, Robin has become a little girl, and she said she would go to West Blue with him. Nami and Linger naturally pestered Luo Te to go with him. Luo Te never knew how to deal with these women's coquetry, so he had no choice but to agree to the three women together. He told Chloe to let them go to New World first, he believed that with Chloe's strength and brains, they should be able to gain a foothold in New World first. So Luo Te did not rush, but went to West Blue slowly. Hey, Luo Te, what is West Blue like? Is the scenery different from East Blue? Will it be more beautiful than East Blue? Linger hugged Luo Te's arm with a curious look on his face. Luo Te shook his head and said, Actually, I don't know, but if you look at the scenery alone, there shouldn't be any difference. Robin laughed at the side. East Blue is known as the weakest in the four seas. There should be many strong people in West Blue. If you are not careful, you may be thrown into the sea to feed the fish. Hearing this, Linger couldn't help but tighten his hand holding Luote's arm and looked around. Nami complained at the side, Sister Robin, don't say such terrible things casually. Luote couldn't help but laugh secretly, although Robin has become much gentler and more clingy, his black-bellied personality has never changed. He often says shocking things. After four days of wandering, Luote and his friends finally arrived at West Blue. Wow, is this West Blue? I've never seen the architectural style of this town before. It's so beautiful. Let's go shopping first. As soon as she arrived at the first town in West Blue, Linger couldn't control her shopping urge. She pulled a few people together and walked to the street. Robin said, Linger, we are here to find someone. We can only go shopping after we find someone. Hearing this, Linger was a little depressed. She lowered her head, poked her two index fingers in front of her, and said hesitantly, But I just want to go shopping. Luo Te shook his head helplessly. How could he not see it? The three girls' eyes were full of expectations for shopping. Let's go to the town first and see if there are any specialties to bring back for Zoro and the others. Ling Er looked up at Luo Te, but aren't we here to recruit people? Luo Te touched Ling Er's head and said, People are in West Blue and can't escape. Let's go to the street to see the scenery here, really? Hearing Luo Te's words, Ling Er jumped up happily and pecked Luo Te on the face. Nami was also excited. Robin was a little quiet, but he was also smiling, obviously ready to have a good look. Sahai's information is still a little closed compared to Grand Line, so the four people did not wear masks. Walking along the street, the special combination of one man and three women naturally attracted a lot of attention, especially the handsome man and beautiful woman. Hey! Those women over there come over and drink with me. Just when Luo Te and others sat down in a crowded pub and planned to order food. An untimely voice sounded in the crowd. Linger frowned, she knew that this sentence was directed at the four of them. Nami was just looking at the menu quietly, not intending to pay attention to this rude guy. Robin glanced at the bearded man, and then looked at the menu with Nami. After so many years of wandering, he was very familiar with this kind of scene. Luo Te looked at the bearded man with interest, and sighed in his heart. Why are there always these blind little Karami who want to die? Isn't it better to drink quietly? Hey, didn't you hear? I asked you to come and drink with me? Someone in the crowd said, It's over, these four people are over, don't they know this is the beard? Yes, these people are miserable. The bearded man raised his head high, enjoying the discussion around him. He nodded to a mustache boy beside him and ordered, Go and bring those girls over there to pour wine for this captain. The mustache boy nodded and walked to the table of Luote's group, put his arm directly on Luote's head, and said with a sneer, Boy, are these your women? How about using them for our captain? Luote couldn't help but sigh, Alas, I still don't have the same tolerance as Shanks. After saying that, a red light flashed in his eyes, and the mustache boy trembled all over, then slowly fell to the ground, foaming at the mouth. His eyes were wide open, as if he had encountered something terrifying. Ah, uh, what happened? Why did that man fall down? Did that man do something? That man is dead now. The people around saw this scene and started talking. Seeing his brother fall to the ground like this, 
The big bearded man stood up directly with a fixed look in his eyes, looking at Luo Te's back. He said angrily, You little brat, I think you are tired of living. Don't you even know the pirate, hair bearded babire, with a bounty of 45 million? Hearing this, Luo Te slowly turned around, looked at the bearded man who was only one meter tall, shook his head and said, Hair bearded? Sorry, I really don't know him. Seeing Luo Te's disdainful expression, Babire took out the pistol in his pocket and pointed it at Luo Te. Kuso, Nanabashine, I think you don't know your place. I am the top 10 pirates in the entire West Blue Bounty, you actually said you don't know me? At this time, the tavern was in chaos. Run away. The hair bearded man is going to show his power. Run away, it doesn't matter if these people die, don't involve me. For a while, the crowd ran out of the tavern. In just a moment, there were no more people in the tavern. Luo Te frowned, West Blue is really much stronger than East Blue. With a bounty of 45 million, can it only rank in the top 10 in West Blue? I think North Blue and South Blue are similar, it seems that East Blue is really called the weakest sea. He didn't intend to cause any commotion in West Blue, but he still underestimated the charm of the three women and the perverts everywhere. Just as Luo Te was thinking, Babuyul had come to Luo Te's side. He picked up a bottle of red wine in front of Luo Te and smashed it on the floor with a bang. You knocked down my little brother now, but as long as these three beauties follow me, I can give you a quick death. Luo Te's eyes fell on the faces of the three women, but found that the three women were all looking at him with a smile. Obviously, they didn't intend to make a move. Looking down at the bearded pirate who was not even as tall as he was when he was sitting, he shook his head and said, Pirate, you are so arrogant, right? I don't care what you do to me, whether you scold me or throw my wine, I will just smile and pretend nothing happened. Then his eyes became sharp, but no matter what your reasons are, I will not forgive the guy who insulted my partner. Looking at Luo Te's eyes, Babuyul's heart trembled inexplicably, and his whole vest was wet in an instant. But he forced himself to calm down and put the muzzle of the gun to Luo Te's temple, oh, I think you don't know the horror of a pirate with a bounty of 45 million? Just when he was about to pull the trigger, a voice came from the corner of the tavern. Boss Babuyul, I advise you not to act rashly. This person is someone you can't afford to offend. Chapter 83 Trafalgar Law Everyone turned their eyes to the source of the sound. They saw a man wearing a Madara hat holding a long knife and leaning against the sideboard. Luo Te's eyes lit up, he had been looking for someone in vain, he had thought it would take a long time to find someone in such a big west blue. Who knew he would appear in front of him like this? He looked him up and down and nodded, it was the Luo he had seen in his previous life. Linger and others looked at Luo in shock and pointed, saying, Luo Te, isn't that the one you were looking for? Hearing this, Luo Te nodded, however, Babuyu looked at Luo with a look of contempt. Oh. Isn't this the death surgeon who has become famous recently, Trafalgar Law? What? Are you going to become a dead soul under my gun too? Luo shook his head and said, Since you know me, don't you know the person in front of you? Hearing Luo's words, Babuyul looked at Luo Te seriously, and he found that the person in front of him looked familiar. But he shook his head and said, I don't care who he is. Today, these three women must go with me. No one can stop me, I said so. He put the pistol against Luo Te's temple again. At this time, one of his younger brothers appeared in front of him with a newspaper, and his voice was a little trembling, Captain. Captain, he, he is Luo, Luo Te. The younger brother held the newspaper in both hands, and his whole body was shaking. Babayer snatched the newspaper from the younger brother's hand, and did not forget to curse. What the hell, a name makes you so scared, it's really embarrassing for our big beard pirates. What Luo Te or not Luo Te, what's there to be afraid of? After saying that, he read the content of the newspaper. Snap. The pistol slipped from his hand to the ground, and then his legs softened and he sat directly on the ground. Luo. Luo Te, Five Emperors Luo Te, Snap, Snap, Snap. He began to slap himself in the face, apologizing constantly. Lord Luo Te, I am just a small fry. I really didn't know that you were Lord Luo Te, the Five Emperors. Please forgive me. He raised his head slowly, his face was swollen, and it was obvious that he had not shown any mercy to Luo Te in order to get his forgiveness. Luo Te looked down at Babuil and said nothing. Babuyul continued to slap himself in the face, Lord Luo Te, I was really blinded by lust just now, and I didn't know that it was your partner. Just treat me as a fart and let it go. At this time, the bearded little brothers were nowhere to be seen, and they had all fled the tavern. Luo Te sighed slowly, I told you that you should never insult my partner. Hearing Luo Te's words, Babuyul knew that this was a death sentence for himself. However, he felt the unparalleled momentum coming from Luo Te at this time, which suppressed him and made him unable to move at all. Luo Te reached out and patted Babuyul's shoulder, then slowly stood up. Luo looked at Babuyul with some curiosity, but his pupils suddenly shrank, because he saw Babuyul's whole body began to shrink and smoke came out. In the end, it turned into a pile of white ashes. Some people watching the excitement outside the window also opened their mouths wide when they saw this scene. They had never seen such a scene before. At this time, Luo Te had come to Luo. Trafalgar Law, I didn't expect to meet you here, 
It really saved me the trouble of looking for you. Luo looked up at the young and somewhat overconfident Luo Te and asked, from the tone, Luo Te boss came to see me specially? Luo Te nodded, yes, I came to see you specially. At this time, a big white bear in a yellow coat jumped out from the side, what do you want to do dark captain, let me be your opponent. Luo said, Babo, go aside, this is not something we can deal with. Babo quickly lowered his head, I'm sorry. Linger and others saw such a cute Babo, and their eyes were full of stars, as if they saw some cute plush toys. Luo Te also found Bebo's behavior a little funny. Hearing that Luo Te came to see him specially, Luo's heart tightened, oh, I don't know what Luo Te boss came to see me for. Luo Te did not rush to explain, but slowly sat on a stool. Should I call you Trafalgar D. Waterlaw or Trafalgar D. Waterlaw? When Luo heard this, his pupils shrank suddenly, he didn't know why Luo Te knew his full name, and he had never mentioned this name to anyone else. Frevens, a place rich in amber lead ore that makes the entire ground white and flawless, it is called the, White Town, by the world, and it also brings a lot of income to this town. Listening to Luo Te's slow narration, Luo's brows gradually frowned. Luo Te paused and continued, however, the government concealed a fact, that is, the raw ore of lead amber is highly toxic. As the raw ore was overmined, a large number of citizens contracted incurable diseases. Seeing that the matter could not be concealed, the royal family chose to flee the country, and those six citizens were all blocked in the country, waiting to die. Many citizens wanted to sneak across the border, and the war broke out. A large number of sick citizens and even doctors were slaughtered. Witnessed the shooting of his parents and the death of his sister. Even the nun who released the citizens at the beginning was killed. A ten-year-old child hid among the corpses and escaped. However, because of the lead amber disease, the child's life was almost gone. In order to avenge the world, he tied bombs all over his body and joined the Don Quixote family. Here he met a man who saved his life Corazon. Luo couldn't help it anymore, and tears left two traces on his originally resolute face, slowly kneeling on the ground. Stop talking, stop talking, why, why do you know, why, why? He felt like a naked beauty standing in front of Luo Te, with no secrets at all. Luo Te ignored him and continued. Corazon found the op-op fruit that is almost the only one that can cure Perkins' disease before the family and Marine. But in order to protect that child, Corazon died at the hands of her brother. Luo was now slumped on the ground, his tears staining the ground beneath him with a wet mess. Luo Te stretched out his hand in front of Luo and said, I came here specially to invite you to join us. I know what you want to do most now, I can also make you have this strength. Luo slowly raised his head and looked at Luo Te, I. I want to kill Ming Zhe by myself. Luo Te looked at the man in front of him with a smile, of course. If you can't even kill him, you don't deserve to be my partner. Seeing Luo's eyes, Luo Te knew what he was thinking in his heart, and he promised, I won't ask you to do anything against your will, and you will live up to your moral principles and conscience. Luo actually always wanted to find a partner to defeat Ming Zhe, and now he happened to appear, and he was an extremely strong partner. And now this partner will not ask him to do something he doesn't want to do. He was really moved, but when he saw Bebo and the other two, he hesitated again. Chapter 84 The island falling from the sky Luo Te laughed and said, They can join me. Of course, if there is any mission, you can go out as a group. Luo was silent. He knew that Don Quixote family was strong and had many shameful underground transactions. It is said that there is a secret transaction with Kaido, one of the four emperors. The Red Heart Pirates alone can't even deal with Don Quixote family. What's more, there may be a Kaido behind. If there is a conflict with Don Quixote family, he doesn't believe Kaido can stand behind and do nothing. His purpose is somewhat different from other pirates who go to sea. Most of the other pirates go to sea for the big secret treasure mentioned by Pirate King Roger. There are also some pirates who go to sea to rob treasures. And his purpose of going to sea is to defeat Doflamingo and avenge Corazon. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but clench his fists. At this time, Luo Te extended an olive branch to him. Although I don't know why Luo Te knows his details and his hatred. And it can also make him have the strength to defeat Doflamingo. But he is not afraid of anything as long as he can get revenge, even his own life. But then again, as such a big pirate, why did Luo Te choose to come to West Blue to find him? What can he get from him? Luo Te naturally knew that Luo would have questions, I know you must be confused, why did I come to you from Grand Line? Luo nodded. Luo Te explained, you don't think I'm here for the so-called immortal surgery? Luo lowered his head and didn't answer, but he was still a little worried in his heart. After all, for someone like Luo Te, he has no other value except this. Luo Te shook his head, of course I'm not here for this ridiculous immortal surgery, and I don't need this kind of thing. If I want it, I will use a little trick and you will do it obediently. I'm actually here to invite you to be the ship's doctor on our ship, how about it? Luo knew that people like Luo Te would disdain to deceive a small person like him. He thought for a while and nodded, okay, I'll join. Ding. Congratulations host, the progress of the partner search mission plus one, and the rewards. Senzu Beans 2000, Beauty Pills 5, 
Skybreaker affiliated pirate ships 5, 1 billion baileys. Close black lens bracket. Listening to the mechanical sound in his mind, Luo Te quickly took a look at the five ships in the system space, and he was very satisfied. Luo Te asked, Then what else do you have not done in West Blue now? Luo shook his head, We are orphans, there is nothing to do. Luo Te stood up and looked around, looking at the empty tavern, sighed helplessly, and said, Let's eat at another one. Is this your ship? Linger pointed to the yellow boat floating in the port. Luo nodded proudly, Yes, this is made by my benefactor. In fact, there is a reason why Luo chose a submarine as his pirate ship. This was originally built by Wolf, the scientist who adopted him, and was inherited by Luo. Moreover, the submarine can be well hidden underwater, which is very practical for escape and combat. He looked around but didn't see the skybreaker. Then he turned to look at Luo Te and said, Captain, where is your ship? He only realized now that there were only three companions around Luo Te. Not only did he not see their ship, but he also didn't see other companions. Luo Te naturally saw Luo's doubts, and he explained, Crow and the others went to New World first. I did come to West Blue after seeing your news. After that, he waved his hand, and a luxurious warship appeared in the port. Nami and the other two were stunned. Do we have such a ship? How come I don't know? Luo Te smiled and said, In fact, I forgot that I have several such ships. Nami turned into a white cloud and circled the ship. Only then did she realize that the ship looked like the Skybreaker. It was simply a smaller and simplified version of the Skybreaker, but the luxury was not ambiguous at all. When Luo and the other four saw Luo Te conjure up a luxurious pirate ship out of thin air like a magic trick, they were all shocked. Luo Te looked at Luo and asked, What? Are you going to use your submarine or take our ship? Luo looked at his polar submarine and shook his head, saying, This is what Wolf passed down to me, and it's also one of my partners. Luo Te nodded in affirmation, Okay, let's go, head towards New World. Nami nodded, stretched out her hand to create a cloud of islands under the two ships, lifted the two ships into the air, and flew towards the Grand Line. Naturally, many people on the shore saw this scene. Quick, quick, big news, Death Surgeon Luo has joined Luo Te's group. Take a photo quickly. Our news agency must be the first to report it, and we will definitely win the sales king tomorrow. Baga, it must be our news agency. Luo Te certainly heard all the discussions and disputes behind him, but he just smiled and didn't intend to deal with it. Beppo, Pekin and others were the first time in their lives to ride on a flying polar submarine. Beppo held the railing on the submarine tightly, and his tongue made a, bulu bulu, sound in the wind. Since the target person has been received, Nami directly controls the height of the ship to 2000 meters, and the forward speed is also maintained at an extremely fast level. After a day of sailing, the two ships return to the sky above the Grand Line. Is this the Grand Line? It doesn't look any different? It's not as scary as others say? Beppo stood on the submarine, looking indifferent. Luo also shook his head at Beppo, somewhat helpless. The two ships were sailing in the air, but the world below was crazy again. News about Luo joining the Luo Te pirates was overwhelming. What? Who is that Luo? He can actually get the favor of the five emperors Luo Te. Don't you know? That Luo is an op-op fruit. He should be the ship Dr. Luo Te found for himself. Is that Luo a doctor? Nonsense. Do you think someone's op-op fruit is a decoration? Luo Te. Do you think this one looks good? In the clothing store, Nami gestured in front of her with a cloak. After two days of sailing in the air, the three girls Nami were tired of the unchanging scenery in the sky. Anyway, they were close to the end of the park, Sabodi Archipelago. Nami saw an unusually prosperous island in the air. With Luo Te's approval, Nami slowly lowered the boat to the port of the island and went shopping. Luo Te nodded and said, Beautiful, beautiful, just like a fairy. Ling Er and Robin also changed their clothes at this time. Luo Te was stunned for a moment. Nami shouted, Boss, pack all these. The boss stood aside, sweating all over, and kept nodding, Yes, yes, yes. I'll pack them for you. Nami hooked the boss over, Then what do you think of the price? The boss quickly said, These are on sale today. As long as three girls and one man shop together, they can be free. Nami raised her eyebrows, Then pack all the clothes in your store for me. The boss quickly asked the clerk to pack all the clothes in the store. Nami knew that the boss was very careful about his life, and he said free tricks because he saw that they were Luo Te's gang. She threw two million baileys to the boss, Boss, we are pirates, but we are still a little different from other pirates. The boss trembled as he held the money bag in his hand and looked at the four people who left, with a trace of relief in his eyes. What, it's dark after not shopping for long. Ling Er remembered that it was noon when they entered the store, and they only shopped for an hour or two at most, so it wouldn't be dark. However, Luo Te noticed that something was wrong. He slowly raised his head and saw a huge island falling from the sky. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 85. Golden Lion Shaki. Luo Te's eyes narrowed, he knew whose masterpiece this was. Golden Lion. Robin was a little surprised when he heard the name, and asked. Luo Te, you said that this fallen island is the masterpiece of Golden Lion. 
At this time, the town was in chaos. Hurry up, something fell from the sky. Run quickly, it's an island that fell. Mom, I don't want to die yet. Child, my child. Luo Te looked at the gradually chaotic streets and said to Nami, let's stop this island first, otherwise the town will be destroyed. Nami nodded and rose to the sky with Luo Te. What do you see? What are you looking at? Hurry up and run for your life. That looks like the five emperors Luo Te, and the white fist Nami. Did they drop the island? Damn Luo Te, pirates are pirates. Lord Luo Te, we have no grudge against you, why do you want to kill us? For a moment, the people who saw Luo Te and Nami thought that Luo Te wanted to destroy them, and they cursed Luo Te and Nami. Not Lord Luo Te, he was just buying clothes in my store, and he paid. Luo Te ignored what the crowd said, he activated electromagnetic force to change the magnetic field of the two islands to the same sex. Although the speed of the island falling was slowed down, it still could not stop completely. At this time, Nami waved her hand, and an island cloud grew at the bottom of Sky Island, and soon spread to the bottom of the entire island. She kept thickening the island cloud, until the island stopped 300 meters above the town. Nami reached out to wipe the sweat from her forehead and nodded to Luo Te. Luo Te appeared beside Nami in an instant and hugged Nami gently, thank you for your hard work. Nami waved her hand and moved the island to the side for several thousand meters before slowly placing the island in the sea. What is this? It was Master Luo Te who saved us. Master Luo Te. Thank you, Master Luo Te. Luo Te ignored it, but stuffed a senzu bean into Nami's mouth and slowly landed on the ground with Nami in his arms. Robin and Ling'er hurried forward. Luo Te, Nami, are you injured? At this time, Luo and Beppo and the other four also ran over. Robin asked, Luo Te, you just said this is the masterpiece of Golden Lion. Luo Te responded, Golden Lion, as a lion fruit ability user, is one of the few people in the sea who can control the island. When Luo heard the three words, Golden Lion, he was stunned, because that was Golden Lion, a great pirate who was on par with Roger and Whitebeard. Luo Te activated the Super Heart Net to search for the figure of Golden Lion, but he did not see any trace of Golden Lion in his sight. He couldn't help but shook his head, Golden Lion is not on it. Many people who survived the disaster now finally believed that Luo Te and Nami saved the city, and they all ran to Luo Te. Lord Luo Te, did you save us? Thank you, Lord Luo Te. Luo Te was most afraid of this kind of scene, so he could only bite the bullet and say, I am a pirate, not a big star, you should do what you should do. After that, he took Nami and others away from the crowd. Luo looked at Luo Te's behavior and couldn't help but sigh, it seems that my choice should be correct. He didn't expect that as the fifth emperor with a bounty of three billion, he didn't look arrogant, but so easygoing. Only at this time did Luo Te look like a man of 18 or 19 years old. Luo Te led everyone to the island that had just landed, I think we should be targeted by the Golden Lion. We don't know where the Golden Lion is now. But since he has targeted us, he will definitely abandon the island again. We can't stay in a place with a town anymore. Everyone nodded in agreement. Surprisingly, Beppo, Shachi and the other four did not show any fear. Luo Te directly moved the polar submarine and the Skybreaker 1 to the new island. He also controlled the island to sail towards the sea far away from the town. Not long after, the sky gradually darkened again. Luo Te and others looked up and saw another island falling from the sky. As usual, Luo Te and Nami caught the island and spliced it together. Luo Te instantly went up to the sky and unfolded the super heart net. This time, he still could not sense the figure of the golden lion. In this way, Four islands were taken over one after another, and Luo Te's super heart net finally showed abnormalities. He looked at everyone with a serious expression. I found the location of Golden Lion. We may have a tough battle next. Ling Er clenched his fists and said with some disdain, What are you afraid of? We have broken the siege of three admirals and many vice admirals. Why are you afraid of Golden Lion? Robin said at this time. I heard that Golden Lion is studying some IQ creatures. If we are caught by accident, we may become specimens. Hearing Robin's solemn reminder, Nami hugged Luo Te's arm and was a little scared. Robin, don't talk so scary. Luo was holding. Ghost cry. At this time, with a face full of fighting spirit, the first opponent after entering the Grand Line is Golden Lion, just thinking about it makes people excited. Nami controlled the island to fly in the direction pointed by Luo Te. Soon, it arrived at an altitude of 10,000 meters. Looking at the floating island in front of him, Luo Te's mouth curled up. We are here. Ling Er and others began to look at the island in front of them. There were several islands floating in the air. Unlike Sky Island, there were no clouds under these islands, but they were just suspended in the air. There were also many islands covered with a lot of seawater. The islands were big and small, and the scenery on each island was different. The dense primeval forests were lush and green, decorating each island like a piece of emerald hanging in the sky. The rainbow built a dreamy bridge between the islands, and the clouds that shuttled from time to time also brought a dreamlike haziness to these islands. Linger couldn't help but sigh. 
What a beautiful island, it seems that the aesthetics of this golden lion are still good. Nami parked the island aside and followed Luo Te's footsteps to the golden lion's island. Luo Te sensed it and said, there are many strange things on the island. Nami and the other three girls also nodded. However, Luo and his companions were all confused. Baibo asked, Lord Luo Te, what is it? Hush. Luo Te made a gesture to keep quiet, here it comes. As soon as he finished speaking, there was a rustling sound in the jungle on the right side of the crowd. Bang. With a loud bang, a huge red octopus appeared in front of everyone. So, so big. Baibo covered his mouth and exclaimed. The height of the octopus alone was more than 30 meters, and the exposed legs were more than 200 meters long. Lingur looked at the giant octopus and said, such a big octopus can be used to make takoyaki, and it will definitely be eaten for a long time. But the bigger the octopus, the older the meat. Let's forget it. The octopus obviously heard Lingur's words, and quickly rolled up its two feet into fists and smashed towards Lingur. Just when Lingur was about to make a move, he heard. Room. Suddenly a huge round cover enveloped everyone. Several cold lights flashed by, and the giant red octopus in front of me had turned into octopus chunks. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 86. Luo TV's Golden Lion. Ling Er raised his eyebrows and turned to look at Luo who was putting away his knife, very capable. Nami and Robin also looked curious. Luo said, you have to do something when you just join to show your value. However, unlike what everyone imagined, there was no blood flowing out of the cut surface of the octopus, and even the various parts of the octopus were still wriggling. Robin was a little confused, what is this? Luo explained, this is the ability of the op-op -op fruit. This circular space is a huge operating table. There will be no bleeding when performing surgery on it. As he said this, he stretched out his finger in the air and directed, baton. The octopus pieces that were originally scattered on the ground flew in the air, some legs connected to each other, and some legs hit the head. Everyone was shocked by this scene. Robin nodded, it seems that this is the magic of op-op fruit. Luo Te was very satisfied with the effect. Yes, it is a genius to be able to develop the fruit to this extent. He clapped his hands, let's go, we don't have time to waste on such a small thing now, the real owner is still far away from us. After that, he flew away first. Ling Er turned into flames, Nami turned into white clouds, and Robin grew wings behind his back. They all followed Luo Te. Luo tightened the ghost cry in his hand, so strong. Can I really keep up with them? Room. He activated the op op fruit and took Babo and others to the island in front. Dot dot dot. After going through several islands, a luxurious palace appeared in front of everyone. This. Is this the palace of the golden lion? Babo grabbed Luo's clothes tightly, and his bare face was full of fear. Luo knocked Babo on the head, what are you afraid of, can you have some backbone? Sorry. Luo Te stepped forward with full momentum. Instantly, all the birds and animals on the island were terrified and ran around everywhere. Beppo and Shachi were pushed back dozens of meters by this momentum, and Luo only managed to stabilize his body by sticking the ghost cry into the ground. This, is this the strength of Captain Luo Te? Is this the strength of a pirate with a bounty of three billion? Just a momentum can have such a terrifying effect. Luo stared at Luo Te's back and sighed. At this time, a wild voice came from the building in front of him. Ha 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 ha, are you here? Luo Te kid. Luo Te responded. Ha ha ha, didn't you come to me on purpose? As Luo Te's voice fell, a figure flew out from the building in front of him. Everyone looked over and saw that this person had half a rudder stuck on his head and a cigar in his mouth, and his long golden hair reached the ground. The most eye-catching thing was that his calves were replaced by two knives. Ha ha ha, you're just a kid, do you really think you can conquer the world? After saying that, his aura also soared into the sky, and for a moment, he was on par with Luo Te's aura. As this golden lion, Robin looked at the old man who looked exactly like the one in the newspaper, this aura is also quite amazing. Beppo, Shachi and others felt this aura that was almost as strong as Luo Te's, and their eyes almost popped out. Their worldviews were shattered in the past two days, and they were almost numb. Luo also stared at the two people confronting each other on the field, as this the aura of the world's top powerhouses. It's really quite amazing. Luo Te said to Nami and others, you go to other islands first. Then he said to Golden Lion, why don't you just be your legend? After saying that, he appeared in front of Golden Lion in an instant and punched Golden Lion in the face. Golden Lion's pupils shrank. What speed is this? However, he was not too surprised. He concentrated hockey on the, dead wood, of his right foot and met Luo Te's fist. Without a sound, the two attacks collided. After two or three seconds, a strong shock wave spread out in all directions. In an instant, the trees on the island were cut in half and floated away. The ground cracked inch by inch, and the tiles on the attic behind Golden Lion were blown away piece by piece. Until this shock wave spread to the whole island, the whole island began to shake. Seeing Luo Te's strong strength, Golden Lion couldn't help but invite him. Ha 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 ha, Luo Te kid, not bad, how about coming to my boat? Luo Te shook his head, 
Forget it, an old man who is about to be buried, what qualifications do I have to get on the boat? Golden Lion looked Luo Te up and down, full of admiration, ha 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 ha, if you come to my boat, I can let you be a deputy captain, let's overturn this boring world together. After listening to Golden Lion's words, Luo Te's mouth shrank. He knew that Golden Lion had said this to Whitebeard before, but Whitebeard did not accept Golden Lion's invitation. Golden Lion's search for strong men and IQ were all for revenge on the world, which was not a noble ideal at all. He was just venting his dissatisfaction. Golden Lion said again, how about it? Then we will share this world. He opened his arms, as if the whole world was in his hands. He felt that Roger was able to dominate the Grand Line and was called the Pirate King by the world because he had a group of powerful partners supporting him, especially Rayleigh. When he fought Roger before, he also hoped that he had a vice-captain like Rayleigh, so that he would not lose in the Battle of Etwal. Now seeing Luo Te's strength at such a young age, his heart of domination began to beat wildly again. Luo Te saw Golden Lion's expression and naturally knew that the old man was holding something bad in his heart. He said calmly. Forget it, Golden Lion, no one in this world can become my captain. And you. As he spoke, Luo Te stretched out his finger and shook it at Golden Lion, you are not even qualified to board my ship. What? Hearing this, Golden Lion was furious, stinky brat, don't be shameless. He just clenched his right hand in the air. Lion Majesty coiling. Suddenly, the earth around the entire island coiled up, forming a circle of giant earth walls surrounding the center, and there were several stone lions on the wall. The lion roared and attacked Luo Te. Luo Te slowly rose to a high altitude, and the electromagnetic force was activated, and a giant electromagnetic knife gradually appeared in his hand. Electromagnetic Knife Circumcision As Luo Te rolled the electromagnetic knife in his hand, a ring of knife light wrapped with lightning spread out from Luo Te to the surroundings. The knife light passed through the rolled earth wall, as if it was in an empty space, and it was extremely smooth. However, these stone lions did not stop moving forward. Luo Te raised his eyebrows, oh, is that so? Luo Te waved the electromagnetic knife in his hand frantically. Countless knife lights appeared on the field at once, and no one could resist the knife lights. Boom. All the stone lions were broken into countless small pieces and smashed on the ground, splashing clouds of dust. Ha 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 ha. Luo Te kid. You don't know swordsmanship, right? Then let me tell you how to use a sword. Slash wave. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 87. The Fall of a Legend. Golden Lion kicked out a slash with his right foot at Luo Te. A huge golden slash instantly appeared in front of Luo Te. Luo Te turned sideways, and the slash brushed Luo Te's nose and landed on the island behind him. The island was immediately split into two and fell towards the sea. Ha 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 ha, you dodged well. Golden Lion looked at Luo Te with a smile. Looking at this attack, Luo Te couldn't help but sigh. This old man can still exert such strength without his legs, it's so terrifying. It seems that attacking Marineford after Roger was executed and being able to attract Garp and Sengoku to join forces is really not in vain. In the previous life, Luo Te was complaining that such strength was not something Luffy could deal with, not to mention that it was Luffy two years ago. In the previous life, there was a saying widely circulated in the One Piece fan circle that no one could defeat Luffy in the movie version. Regardless of whether Golden Lion's position is good or bad, Luo Te felt that his blood was boiling when he could fight with such a strong man. He slowly put away the electromagnetic knife in his hand, and his fist clenched with a creaking sound, Golden Lion, it's my turn to attack next. As he said this, he wrapped Conqueror's hockey and armament hockey around his fist, and suddenly black and red lightning filled the area around his fist. Golden Lion looked at Luo Te's fist and bit off the cigar in his mouth in surprise, you can wrap Conqueror's hockey at such a young age. It seems that I really can't treat you as a kid. After saying this, he also wrapped hockey around the famous sword, Sakura Ten, and for a while blue lightning also lingered on the blade. Seeing this scene, Luo Te raised his eyebrows, sure enough, Golden Lion also has Conqueror's hockey. That's right, it's really unreasonable for such a top powerhouse to not have Conqueror's hockey. Luo Te appeared in front of Golden Lion in an instant, and Golden Lion also raised his left foot and slammed Luo Te's fist. Bang. With a loud bang, a more powerful shock wave spread out than before. The island under the two men's feet could no longer hold on, and it broke into pieces and fell down. The sky above the two men's heads was split in half. Ha 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 ha. I haven't had such a good fight in a long time. Golden Lion couldn't help laughing. Luo Te raised his mouth. What? Is this your strength? After saying that, he sent hockey to his fist. Suddenly, Golden Lion felt a huge force coming from Luo Te's fist. The whole person was blown away, flew back hundreds of meters, and smashed into another island, sinking deeply. And the island was also shaken by this huge force, and many strange animals fell from it from time to time. Boom. Golden Lion stretched out his hand and patted the island behind him, and the island instantly flew back hundreds of meters, and his figure appeared in the air again. Damn stinky boy, let you see what real strength is. 
He saw his hands waving towards Luo Te, and then one island after another hit Luo Te at a high speed. Luo Te attached the electromagnetic force to his fist, and smashed the flying islands one by one. Just when he smashed the last island, a voice came. Lion, Thousand Slice Valley. Instantly, countless slashes flew towards Luo Te. Luo Te relied on his super strong observation hockey and flexible body to move around. All the slashes could not hurt Luo Te at all. Seeing this scene, Golden Lion couldn't help but feel his heart pounding. Luo Te came to Golden Lion in a few flashes, you should take this knife skill home to cut fish. After saying that, he appeared above Golden Lion's head in an instant. With the entanglement of hockey, Luo Te's right foot had become black and shining with red and black lightning. Then he spun and fell to the top of Golden Lion's head. Golden Lion also reacted quickly, crossing his hands to block the top of his head. Bang, bang, bang. For a while, the two fought each other for dozens of moves. Bang. With Luo Te's kick, Golden Lion was kicked and hit the island. Golden Lion waved his hand and stood in the air again, looking quite embarrassed. Ha 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 ha. You are having fun. Luo Te, you and I have such strength, why don't we join forces to make a hole in this world? Luo Te looked at the ferocious old man in front of him with some contempt. He said, look at you now, how can you be qualified to let me join forces with you? Golden Lion was like a puppy whose tail was stepped on, damn stinky kid. I want you to die. Lion governed place earth coiling. Luo Te shook his head, surrounded the electromagnetic force, and quickly appeared in front of Golden Lion with a few flashes. And the lions that passed by all dissipated. He wrapped Conqueror's hockey, armament hockey and electromagnetic force around his fist. A punch hit Golden Lion's temple, and Golden Lion raised his arm to block. Bang! Golden Lion was hit by this powerful punch and flew dozens of meters to the side. Luo Te did not stop attacking, and the electromagnetic body appeared next to Golden Lion again. He turned around and kicked Golden Lion's waist. Bang! 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 For a moment, Golden Lion was like a ball in Luo Te's hand, flying between islands. With Luo Te's last kick, he kicked the rudder on Golden Lion's head into Golden Lion's head. Luo Te landed in front of Golden Lion, panting, Shaki, you said you don't care about the legend, why do you have to think about subverting this world? Golden Lion looked at the young figure in front of him and murmured, why did I fail again? Roger. After that, he slowly closed his eyes. At this time, all the surrounding islands began to fall. Luo Te activated the Super Heart Net to sense and found that Nami and others had solved the battle and were on the side of breaking sky number. One. He quickly pinched out a few notifications and told Nami that he would go to Qinghai first to stop the islands that fell because Golden Lion's ability disappeared. Let them go to Sabayati Archipelago and wait for him first. He threw a magic bean into his mouth. Then he kept turning and controlled the falling islands one by one to slowly lower them to the uninhabited sea area with electromagnetic force. Even though Luo Te had slowed down the speed below, it still stirred up layers of huge waves. But fortunately, these locations were far away from other islands, so there were not many casualties. What? There is another huge island here, which is very troublesome. He looked at a huge island in front of him that was falling rapidly towards an island below. Luo Te could only throw another magic bean into his mouth, and appeared on the island in a few instants. He activated the electromagnetic force, and countless lightning burst out all over his body for a while, like an electric shock boy. Damn it! I was wondering why this island fell so fast, it turned out that the magnetic forces of the two islands were just opposite. Because this island was almost close to the inhabited island below, he could only put this island on the sea surface 400 meters away in the end. However, it stirred up huge waves of several hundred meters and spread to the surroundings. Luo Te quickly teleported to the inhabited island and used the fruit ability to intercept the huge waves of several hundred meters. Who is that? It seems to be a person. Did he save us? Why does that person look different from us? His hair is so short. Yes, and his chest is so flat. Hearing the discussion of the crowd behind him, Luo Te slowly turned around. But he saw that there were only women behind him, not a single man. As this, he looked at the back of the island again. His eyes widened, isn't this, isn't this the Nine Snake Island? Dot 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 dot. Chapter 88. Unexpected landing on Nine Snake Island. This, this is a man. What the hell? Hearing what New Mother said, all the Nine Snake Island warriors were so shocked that they couldn't speak. They originally came to the shore to resist the huge waves that had just been stirred up by the fall of the island. Unexpectedly, they saw a man that they might never see in their lifetime. Is this a man? Is he a species of a different gender from us? He really looks very strange. At this time, a clear female voice sounded. Man. Drive this man out of Nine Snake Island. Yes. When the warriors heard this voice, they all aimed their snake-like bows and arrows at Luo Te. Man. Leave this island quickly. Men are not welcome here. Luo Te turned his eyes to the person who came, and the whole person was stunned. This person had long black hair eyes as deep as the ocean, showing a deep blue light, as if it could attract people's souls. 
A pair of snake-shaped earrings added a bit of mystery and unique temperament to her. Under a red chongsam that was split to the ilium was a pair of Ultimate's well-proportioned long legs. Luo Te knew her, of course. This was Boa Hancock, the current king of Amazon Lily, the most beautiful woman in the pirate world. Even though he had read the comics in his previous life, he still felt that she was amazing. She was even more beautiful than in the comics. But Hancock was looking up with a proud look on his face. Then he made a heart shape with both hands in front of his chest. Accompanied by a voice of, infatuated with Ganfang. Circles of pink hearts floated towards Luo Te. The warriors of Nine Snake Island all looked at Hancock with admiration. However, as the hearts passed through Luo Te's body, the scene that everyone expected did not appear. Luo Te was still standing in front of everyone in full vigor. Look, this man didn't turn into stone. Why, even women can't resist the charm of Hancock, how can men resist it? This man must have used some magic. Hancock was also a little stunned when she saw this scene. This was the first time she met a man who could block her move. In the past, even Marine Vice Admiral turned into stone in front of her charm. Luo Te rubbed his temple helplessly, is this how you deal with your savior? Hearing Luo Te's words, a girl with short yellow hair said hesitantly, Yes, he, he is the savior of our Nine Snake Island, do we really want to drive him out? However, the sword-browed female warrior on the side scolded, Margaret. This is the daughter island. There has never been a precedent of men landing on the island. This is the rule set by successive emperors. We can't break it. Hearing this, Margaret could only nod, I know, Lord Kikio. Luo Te looked at the arrows shining silver in the sun and shook his head, it was originally a misunderstanding. It seems that only by subduing your king can you stop. After speaking, he appeared next to Hancock in an instant. You are the queen of this island, right? I really just passed by and saved you. Is this how you repay kindness with enmity? And the soldiers on the coast were shocked. They didn't expect the man to be so fast. They panicked for a moment and quickly pointed the arrows at Luo Te again. Nu Po finally saw Luo Te's face clearly. She was horrified and her voice began to tremble. This, this person is, the fifth emperor Luo Te. What? The other warriors all changed their expressions and their eyes widened. Although Amazon Lily was somewhat isolated from the news, it was still possible to see news about big figures like Luo Te. Naturally, she knew the value of the word, Luo Te. Nu Po said to Luo Te at this time, I wonder what business Lord Luo Te has come to Nine Snake Island for. Luo Te thought about it and did not intend to explain. He shook his head and said, I just passed by here and saw the huge waves about to submerge the island, so I blocked them. Who knew you would repay kindness with hatred? Hearing this, Nu Po blushed and did not know what to say. However, at this time, Hancock looked at the man who walked out of the newspaper beside him, and his whole face was red. Lord Luo Te, you are finally here, I have been waiting for you for a long time. Luo Te frowned and looked at the beautiful and somewhat criminal woman in front of him. If I remember correctly, this is the first time we meet, right? However, Hancock did not answer immediately, but waved his hand to the soldiers of John Lu Zhang and ordered. Everyone, please leave, this is my guest. Newt's eyes narrowed, and she reminded him. He is Luo Te, a pirate with a bounty of three billion. You have to think clearly, Hancock. He. But before she finished her words, she was scolded by Hancock. Shut up. You, the Amazon Emperor. Gloriosa. Even if the country is destroyed because of my consciousness, everyone will forgive me. As he said this, Hancock leaned back until his entire face was blocked by the rabbit. If you want to ask why, yes, because I am too beautiful. The soldiers who saw this scene had hearts in their eyes. It appears, Lady Snake's extremely contemptuous posture. Ah, Lady Snake, Lady Snake, I love you. Lady Snake, I can't do it. Hancock continued. As an emperor, you once abandoned the country and went to sea. You are a traitor to Nine Snake Island. Hearing this, Nu Po began to defend. That's why I abdicated and settled in a corner. Hancock slowly straightened up and looked at Nu Po. Then you just stay in a corner quietly. You dare to be so presumptuous to the current emperor. Nu Po took a deep look at Hancock and sighed. He had no choice but to make Hancock's decision. Just hope Luo Te doesn't mess around. She slowly turned around and walked towards the depths of the island. Her back was a little hunched, just like an old man in his twilight years. The soldiers watched Nu Po leave and put down their bows and arrows one after another. Hancock, what the hell, we're going back first. With crazy enthusiasm and undisguised love, the soldiers went back one after another. Hancock then slowly turned around to face Luo Te, and the whole person changed from the vigorous and resolute just now to a little woman in an instant. She poked her index fingers in front of her body, and did not dare to look directly at Luo Te, that. Lord Luo Te, I have been waiting for you. Luo Te looked at the beautiful woman with a blushing face in front of her, and for a moment she forgot how to speak. After a long time without getting an answer, Hancock couldn't help but raise her head, but as soon as she met Luo Te's eyes, she quickly looked away. Lord Luo, Lord Luo Te, did I? Dot did I say anything wrong? 
Luo Te came back to his senses and heard Hancock's words. He touched his head in confusion, why did you say you were waiting for me? Hancock lowered his head and said softly, since Lord Luo Te attacked celestial dragons, I have been paying attention to Lord Luo Te. I have never missed any news about Lord Luo Te. I look forward to meeting Lord Luo Te one day, but as a Shichibukai and the king of a country, I can't do whatever I want. So I can only hope that Lord Luo Te can come to Nine Snake Island one day. Hancock's face turned red and smoke began to come out of his head, as this, is this love. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 89. Love comes like a tornado. After listening to Hancock's explanation, Luo Te finally understood the reason. It turned out that it was because he attacked celestial dragons, and celestial dragons were Hancock's lingering nightmare. So Hancock kept paying attention to his news afterwards, and never thought that he would fall in love with him over time. Luo Te couldn't help but touch his face, and secretly proud in his heart, am I so handsome? The world's most beautiful woman is attracted to me. Then, that, Lord Luo Te, can I, can I invite you to enjoy the dinner together? Hancock's voice was soft, like a cat tickling Luo Te's heart. Luo Te knew that if he refused like this, Hancock would definitely die of lovesickness. And he himself really couldn't refuse the affectionate confession of such a stunning beauty, and he also wanted to have something with her. He nodded and responded, Okay. Then I'll try the specialties of Nine Snake Island. Hearing Luo Te's reply, Hancock collapsed. Luo Te quickly reached out to support Hancock, and his delicate body fell into his arms, as if he had no bones. A faint fragrance permeated his brain. This, this is, getting married. Luo Te couldn't help but frown. What the hell is going on? In his previous life, he also found it magical when he read comics. A famous world's most beautiful woman would fall in love with Luffy for no reason. She was completely in love. And now that the world's most beautiful woman actually fell in love with him, he knew how good this feeling was. Dot dot dot. Hancock took Luo Te to the palace. Luo Te also began to look at this daughter island. The whole daughter country looked quite busy, and the streets were full of hawking. Come and see, the fresh sea kings just hunted back today. Come and taste the giant wild boar meat freshly baked today. You want to make a 40 gin machete, right? Come and get it tomorrow. Whether it was customers, vendors, blacksmiths, or butchers, they were all women, and each of them was strong and healthy. They were both citizens and warriors. This was a country where everyone was a soldier. However, all the citizens along the way saw Hancock with stars on their faces and hearts in their eyes. Snake Princess. Ah, Snake Princess. A-W-S-L, Snake Princess is looking at me. Snake Princess, I love you. What the hell is Hancock, ah? Luo Te really had a strange feeling watching this scene, as if he was following a superstar. He felt it was normal for these people to have such a reaction. Even without the sweet fruit, Hancock's peerless beauty alone was enough to make everyone fall in love with him. Moreover, this country is martial, and the stronger the strength, the more beautiful it is. The one standing at the top of this country's strength is naturally the Emperor Boa Hancock. However, Hancock did not respond one by one, and took Luo Te's hand and walked towards the palace. At this moment, a little black cat jumped out from the crowd next to him. Meow. The black cat ran to Hancock's feet and rubbed her high heels intimately. Who on earth is throwing cats on my avenue? After saying that, he raised his foot and kicked the black cat away. An old lady ran out of the crowd, hugged the black cat in her arms, and quickly bowed her head to admit her mistake, sorry, it's my fault. Hancock took a look and said, then be more careful next time. Then he turned to look at Luo Te, Lord Luo Te, please don't pay attention to these details, she didn't mean it. His tone was quite gentle. Hancock's change of expression shocked Luo Te directly. He was cold and ruthless in the last second, and became as docile as a cat in the next second. Nine Snake Island is not very big. Following Hancock's steps, we soon arrived at the square in front of the palace. At this time, a battle was going on in the square, and the surrounding stands were full of spectators, shouting to cheer for the warriors they supported. I don't know who shouted, Lord Snake is here. All eyes were on him. Snake Lady, come and teach us. Hancock shook his head, you continue. Luo Te looked at the two women fighting on the field, and couldn't help but be shocked, just like the comics he read in his previous life. These two warriors all know armament hockey, and observation hockey has also been introduced. He then sensed and found that there were many people on the entire island who were stronger than the two on the field. He couldn't help but be shocked again, and finally understood why the bear would shoot Luffy to the Nine Snake Island. Obviously, the bear also knew that the average person on this island had hockey, and hockey was exactly the power that Luffy and his group lacked the most when they went to the New World. Sending Luffy to this island was naturally hoping that Luffy could learn hockey on this island. Hancock brought Luo Te to the banquet hall of the palace. There was a huge dining table in the huge banquet hall. At this time, there were only Luo Te and Hancock in the banquet hall. Hancock whispered in Luo Te's ear, Lord Luo Te, wait a moment, I'll prepare it for you. Looking at Hancock's appearance, Luo Te actually felt flattered. After all, 
Hancock is the ruler of a country and one of the seven warlords of the sea. He is a big shot anyway, but he behaves like a servant in front of him. The key is that Hancock himself is still enjoying it. After a while, Hancock appeared in front of Luo Te with a plate decorated with snakes, and the plate was already filled with white pastries. Lord Luo Te, this is a snack made for you personally. Hancock's voice was soft, like a young wife waiting for her husband to come home. Luo Te reached out and took a piece of pastry. The white pastry was cold to the touch and dotted with pink hearts. It was obviously prepared by Hancock for him. He slowly put the cake into his mouth, and with just a sip, the whole cake was dissolved by saliva, turning into a sweet taste that filled his entire mouth. At the same time, it was accompanied by a faint scent of peach blossoms. He felt that even the breath he exhaled was the scent of peach blossoms. He couldn't help but pick up another piece and put it in his mouth. Hancock was waiting for Luo Te's evaluation with anticipation. Luo Te saw Hancock's expression, and he found that he would know this question. His pupils dilated, and he looked amazed, wow, it's so delicious, this is simply the most delicious snack I have ever eaten. After that, he grabbed a few more cakes and put them in his mouth. It's not just a pretense, this cake is really delicious. After getting Luo Te's affirmation, Hancock became happy, as long as Lord Luo Te likes it, this is just an appetizer. She gently placed the plate on the table in front of Luo Te, Lord Luo Te, please wait a moment, I will go to make the main course. After that, she turned and walked inside. Looking at Hancock's back, Luo Te couldn't help but sigh secretly. It has always been difficult for heroes to resist the temptation of beauty. I don't know how Tang Seng overcame his heart and left the tear-stained queen of the kingdom of women to continue on the journey to the west. Hancock was very fast. In just one or two hours, the table in front of Luo Te was full. Hancock knelt beside Luo Te and fed Luo Te one masterpiece after another. If the people of Nine Snake Island saw this scene, they would definitely be shocked. Because their emperor is now like a young wife serving her husband. Luo Te was still a little uncomfortable at first and wanted to refuse Hancock's behavior. But when he saw that every time he ate a bite of food fed by Hancock, a happy smile would appear on Hancock's face, he began to accept Hancock's behavior. It is true that the three women on his ship were very good to him, but Hancock, who put his whole heart on him and liked him without any brains, gave Luo Te a different feeling. The meal lasted more than two hours, until Luo Te couldn't eat any more, Hancock stopped feeding him. After cleaning up everything, the sky outside gradually darkened. What's wrong? Hancock. Looking at Hancock who was a little tangled in front of him, Luo Te asked softly. Hancock gritted his teeth, as if he had made a decision, Lord Luo Te, wait here for a while, I'll go take a bath first. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark. Should I be so direct? Luo Te was confused. Everyone evacuate quickly, Lady Snake is going to take a bath. Immediately, the people of the Nine Snakes pirates drew the curtains and surrounded the entire palace. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 90. Female Fragrance. Wah wah wah. The gurgling sound of running water lingered in Luo Te's ears, and he was a little distracted. This, is it so exciting right from the start. He was so hot at this moment that he even lost his appetite for the fruit snacks that Hancock had carefully prepared for him. Many people had gathered on the square outside the palace, most of them were warriors from the Nine Snakes pirates. And Hancock's two sisters, Boa Santansania and Boa Marigold, were guarding outside the curtain. Every time her sister took a bath, not only would she clear the area, but the two sisters would also guard outside, never allowing anyone to enter, not even a fly. And when the two sisters took a bath, they would also guard each other outside the door, never giving anyone the opportunity to see the pattern behind them. Sir Marigold, is it really okay to let Snake Lady and Luo Te stay alone together? A warrior from the Nine Snakes Pirates asked, his tone full of worry. Marigold shook her head and said, don't worry. Although Luo Te's bounty is high, Lord Hancock is very strong. Although Marigold comforted the warriors of the Nine Snakes Pirates, she was not confident at all. After all, Luo Te is the only man who has resisted his sister's charm and did not turn into stone. And Luo Te's bounty is as high as three billion baileys. According to her understanding, three billion baileys is among the top in the world. Everyone with this level of bounty is standing at the top of the world. If Luo Te really makes trouble for his sister, the consequences are unimaginable. At this time, Santansania also said, Don't worry, Lord Hancock knows his limits. Dot dot dot. After a while, Hancock slowly opened the curtain. Trampling. 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 The sound of bare feet stepping on the ground gradually approached Luo Te's back. Lord Luo Te, please turn around. Hearing this, Luo Te's heart condensed, so direct. But he still slowly turned around. What came into view was Hancock sitting on the snake with his back to him on the bed, his black hair falling quietly on his back like a waterfall, covering half of his body. He could vaguely see Hancock's hourglass-like waist and back proportions. 
His slender waist was so slender that he could hold it in one hand, and there were still some crystals on his white jade-like skin, which were water stains that had not been wiped off. Hancock reached out and slowly lifted his long hair, but his hand was trembling slightly. As the long hair was lifted, there was an extremely eye-catching red mark on the back of this snow-white skin. See, see it, Lord Luo Te. Hancock's voice was a little hoarse. This is the emblem of celestial dragons, branded on the people raised by the world's nobles, and it is the proof of the, lower human, that cannot be eliminated in a lifetime. Luo Te nodded, see it, Hancock. Hearing this, Hancock let go of his long hair, and the seal was blocked again. The python Salome put Hancock's clothes back on and slowly turned around with Hancock. Hancock hugged himself tightly with both hands. Her whole body began to tremble. What a tragic past, without any hope, I only wanted to die. Fortunately, something happened four years later. A fishman climbed up the red line with his bare hands and rescued many slaves. The three of his sisters were also saved in this incident. But after so many years, no matter what method I use, I can't remove this painful mark. Hancock began to cry, I don't want anyone to know our past, even if it means deceiving the whole country. Luo Te was also infected by Hancock's emotions, and appeared beside her in a teleportation, slowly hugging her in his arms. Hancock, I know everything, and I also know that there are many people in the world who have suffered the same fate. Fisher Tiger is also a hero, but this alone cannot fundamentally solve the problem. So. He paused and continued, so I plan to overthrow this world, pull down those high-ranking world nobles from the altar, and re-establish a new regime. Of course, those celestial dragons will also be executed by me. The two celestial dragons before are just the beginning. After saying this, Luo Te clearly felt the delicate body in his arms tremble, and was obviously shocked by Luo Te's crazy words. Lord Luo, Lord Luo Te, are you really going to do this? Luo Te gently lifted Hancock's hair at the temples, I, I went to see for this dream. Ah, Hancock couldn't help but let out a cat cry, and she was completely drunk in Luo Te's arms. Luo Te remembered that there were five beauty pills in his system space, and wondered if they could remove the seal on Hancock's back. He took out the beauty pill and put it in front of Hancock. Hancock, try this, it should be able to remove the seal on your back. Looking at the white pill in front of him, Hancock stretched out his trembling hands to catch it. Lord Luo Te, this. Luo Te said in a gentle voice, try it, it should work. Hearing this, Hancock was a little moved. Even though the possibility Luo Te gave her could not remove the mark on her back, she still chose to believe Luo Te, the man she deeply loved. As her red lips pursed, the pill was swallowed by Hancock. In just a moment, Hancock felt the mark on her back was numb, as if there were millions of ants crawling. Hum. Hancock couldn't help but let out a warning. After a while, this feeling gradually disappeared, and she slowly opened her eyes. Lord Luo. Luo Te, I. Luo Te slowly lifted the long hair on Hancock's back, and saw that her skin was smoother and whiter than before, with a faint sense of translucence like jade. The most different from before was that the eye-catching mark on the back had disappeared. He was also a little shocked. He didn't expect that this beauty pill could really remove the seal of celestial dragons. Hancock, it's really gone. Hancock looked back at Luo Te in disbelief. Lord Luo Te, is it really, really gone? That seal. Luo Te smiled and nodded. At this time, the python Salome came over with a mirror in his mouth. Hancock saw her back through the mirror, which had been restored to its original state. There was no longer the mark that made her feel a dull pain. She couldn't help but reach out and touch her back. She felt the delicate touch of the skin on her hand, which was no longer rough from the scars in the past. After repeated confirmation, she knew that the mark was really gone. Snap. With a slight shake of her hand, the mirror slid to the ground. Hancock couldn't hold it back anymore, and tears fell down. This nightmare-like mark was finally removed, and she no longer needed to dismiss the people every time she took a bath. And the unbearable memory of childhood seemed to fade away in her heart as the mark was removed. Luo Te could feel the delicate body in his arms trembling slightly. He knew that it was the release of Hancock's emotions that had been suppressed for many years. After a long time, she slowly turned around and looked at Luo Te, her beautiful eyes filled with tears, which made people feel pity. Master Luo Te, thank you. After saying that, she kissed Luo Te's lips. Luo Te's pupils shrank, he didn't expect Hancock to be so direct, but when he came to his senses, he also responded fiercely. Snap, he stretched out his hand and snapped his fingers, and a spherical electromagnetic barrier enveloped the two of them. Python Sarum, of course not among them. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 91. Boa Hancock. Dong, dong, dong. At this time, Nupo came to the square with a cane. Looking at the palace behind, she guessed that something must have happened between Hancock and Luo Te. Just now, she noticed the look in Hancock's eyes when he looked at Luo Te, which was clearly a manifestation of love. Now it seems that Hancock should have fallen. Alas. She sighed deeply, and felt very emotional in her heart, as if every emperor of Amazon would fall in love with a man. 
But most emperors did not have a good end. I don't know if Hancock will get a good result this time, but it is bad news for Nine Snake Island anyway. She knew that big figures like Luo Te would not stay in Nine Snake Island forever, so Hancock might die of lovesickness like the previous emperors. But if Luo Te took Hancock away, he would definitely be deprived of the title of Shichibukai by the world government. In this way, Amazon Lily would not only lose a powerful emperor, but also be attacked by the world government because of the lack of Shichibukai's protection. For a while, she was worried about the future of Amazon Lily. Everyone go back and rest, the bath is over. Santa Sonia looked puzzled. New mother, what did you say? How come we didn't know that my sister had finished bathing? Marigold also looked at new mother with some curiosity. New mother shook her head, I just knew it naturally, everyone go back and rest. Santa Sonia and Marigold also believed what new mother said, because my sister's bathing only took two hours before. Now four hours have passed, and the time has changed from evening to night. The two sisters looked at each other and nodded, everyone go back, we two sisters will stay here tonight. The warriors of Nine Snake Island also agreed and went back one after another. Santansania and Marigold looked at Nupo in front of them, Nupo, you should go back too, we are here, nothing will happen. Nupo said at this time, you should go back too, Luote will be fine in the palace. Marigold asked at this time, Nupo, my sister's attitude towards Luote seems to be a little strange today, I have never seen her show such an expression to any man. Nupo knew that she could not hide it from Hancock's two sisters. After all, the three of them grew up together, and they could sense if there was anything strange between them. She sat on the ground, yes, Hancock should have fallen in love with Luo Te. What, Santansania was so shocked that she stuck out her tongue, you said my sister fell in love with Luo Te. Is it the kind of love between men and women? New mother touched the snake that turned into a crutch and slowly said, yes, this is also a disaster that every generation of emperors has encountered. Hearing this, Marigold looked worried, then, what should I do? New mother also looked worried, I don't know, I can only see what Luo Te's attitude is tomorrow. Marigold and Santansania also had no direct solution, so they could only make a decision when they saw their sister and Luote tomorrow. Okay, let's all go back. Dot dot dot. The dazzling sunlight at noon penetrated through the eyelids, and Hancock slowly opened his beautiful eyes. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw a handsome face. Hancock, you're awake. Looking at Hancock's somewhat tired face, Luote couldn't help but blame himself a little. They talked until almost dawn last night. Hancock's beautiful eyes slowly focused on Luo Te's face, and in an instant, his whole body was red like a cooked shrimp, Lord Luo Te, good morning. Luo Te scratched Hancock's nose, it's not early now, it's noon. Hancock was about to get up, she frowned, hiss. Luo Te asked with some concern, does it still hurt? Hancock nodded with a blush, glanced at the blood on the bed sheet, and looked happy. Luo Te was a little distressed at this time, he knew that Hancock was a big love brain, and now he gave everything to him. If he knew that he still had Robin, he didn't know what would happen. Although Robin has become quite gentle now, he also listens to him. But when encountering such a thing, he is not sure what the black-bellied woman will do. Shaking his head, he is not going to tell Hancock about this matter at this moment. He can only find a good opportunity to talk about it later. Hancock seemed to see that Luo Te was worried, and gently hugged Luo Te, Lord Luo Te, what's wrong? Nothing, I'm just thinking about the future. Hancock hugged Luo Te and leaned gently in Luo Te's arms, with stars in his beautiful eyes, Lord Luo Te, I support you no matter what you do. Looking at Hancock's affectionate look, Luo Te couldn't help but lower her head and blocked her lips. Ah, dot dot dot, when Luo Te and the others came out of the palace, it was already afternoon. Sister, good afternoon, Santansania saw that her sister finally appeared and slowly breathed a sigh of relief. Except that her sister's walking posture was a little strange, at least it seemed that there was no danger at present. Hancock's eyes were always on Luo Te, and he didn't hear Santansania's words clearly. Luo Te gently patted Hancock's shoulders, Hancock, your sisters are here. After Luo Te's reminder, Hancock realized that the curtain of his bath had been removed at some point. And now there were three people in the palace hall. They are new mother Gloriosa, and two sisters, Boya Santansania and Boya Marigold. Hancock coughed lightly, they are all, all here. But there was no awkward expression on his face. Seeing Hancock's performance, new mother sighed helplessly, Hancock, have you and Luo Te already? Hearing this, Hancock's expression suddenly changed, why? Do you want to intervene in my private affairs, the former emperor? New mother knew that she could no longer let Hancock's temper run wild, even if she would be thrown out. She exhaled and said, Hancock, you have to think clearly. You are the ruler of a country, you are the seven warlords of the sea. Hancock pointed his right index finger at newborn, you don't have to ask what I do, and no matter what bad things I do, I will be forgiven. As he spoke, Hancock slowly leaned back until his whole body was bent like a bow, why? Because I am beautiful enough. Luo Te hurried forward and put his arm around Hancock's waist, 
Hancock, let me talk to them next, okay. Feeling Luo Tae's strong arm on his waist, Hancock collapsed in Luo Tae's arms. Responded with a cat-like voice, okay. Luo Tae then straightened Hanku and slowly said to Newborn and the other two, I want you to join the Luo Tae pirates. Nani. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 92. The Nine Snakes Pirates. Santansania and the other two were all shocked. They didn't expect to hear this sentence when they met Luo Tae again. They turned their eyes to Hancock, with questions on their faces. Hancock said, Well, I agree. I will support whatever Lord Luo Tae wants to do. Nu Po's old face was wrinkled, but when she saw Hancock's mind was on Luo Tae, she knew that she could only let Luo Tae explain. Santansania and Marigold also cast their eyes on Luo Tae. Luo Tae sat down slowly, I know what you are thinking and worried about now. If you join the Luo Tae pirates now, you will definitely be targeted by the world government, and even the country will be destroyed because of it. Hearing Luo Tae's words, Nu Po did not escape, yes, I know that Lord Luo Tae can protect the Nine Snake Island with his strength, but I believe you will not always be on the Nine Snake Island, right? Luo Tae nodded when he heard it. Then how can you guarantee that the Nine Snake Island will not be attacked by the world government during your absence? Hearing Nu Po's question, Luo Tae looked up at Santansania and Marigold, and found that both of them had a questioning expression. Obviously, they were all worried about how to ensure the safety of the Nine Snake Island when they were not there. They knew that Hancock was very strong, but they were not blind enough to believe that Hancock could deal with the world government. Luo Tae smiled and said, It is impossible for me to stay in the Nine Snake Island forever, and I may not come back frequently in the future. Hearing this, Nu Po and the other two stared at Luo Tae, waiting for his next words. But what if I move the entire Nine Snake Island away? What? The three of them were all shocked, and even Hancock was horrified when he heard Luo Tae's words. Luo Tae raised a confident smile, you don't know I have a territory yet, you think I use the ship as my home like other pirate groups. Santa Sonia tilted her head, but we didn't hear that you have a territory. Luo Tae pointed to the sky, my territory is in the sky. Nani. Nu Po couldn't help but screamed, she had never heard of an island in the sky. Have you heard of Sky Island? Hearing this, the three of them nodded in acknowledgement. However, Nu Po said, Although we have heard of Sky Island, it only exists in legends. They have seen reports about Sky Island in the newspapers, but almost all of them are news about adventurers blindly looking for Sky Island crashes. As for whether Sky Island exists or not, there is no definite report. Even most people have passed it on and it has become a legend. For several people to have such expressions is also within Luo Tae's expectations. He knows that no matter what he says now, they may not believe it, and only by letting them see it with their own eyes can their concerns be dispelled. Do you want me to take you up there? Hearing that they could go to Luo Tae's territory, Hancock became interested. Yes, I want to go. Luo Tae scratched Hancock's nose lovingly, okay, I'll take you there. After that, she looked at the three new posse. Santa Sonia and Marigold saw that their sisters agreed, so they naturally did not refuse. Nu Po was silent for a while and also agreed to this proposal. Hancock ran over and hugged Luo Tae's arm. Lord Luo Tae hasn't had breakfast yet, I'll make it for you. When the three new posse saw Hancock like this, their eyes almost fell to the ground. They had never seen Hancock like this before. It simply shattered their three views. Luo Tae nodded to Hancock, thank you, Hancock. Meow. Hancock couldn't help but let out a cat's cry, and went to the kitchen happily. Nu Po couldn't help but fix her eyes on Luo Tae. She wanted to see what charm this man had that could fascinate the king of a country like this. Luo Tae spread his hands proudly. Dot dot dot. The three new paws couldn't stand the scene of the couple feeding each other, so they left when the two just started feeding each other. But before leaving, Luo Tae handed two beauty pills to Santansania and Marigold, telling them that this could remove the marks on their backs. The two sisters only took them with doubt. However, Hancock was fully devoted to feeding Luo Tae, and didn't feel when the three new paws left. Luo Tae didn't say anything. The breakfast ended with the two of them being affectionate. Let's go, they are ready. Luo Tae took Hancock's hand and stood up. When the two arrived at the square, only Marigold was there. Sister, we are ready. Hancock turned his eyes to Luo Tae, obviously wanting Luo Tae to make the decision. Luo Tae activated the super heart net, and sensed that a ship on the coast was full of people, presumably all warriors of the Nine Snakes pirates. Luo Tae responded to Marigold, then let's go. After that, he disappeared instantly with Hancock. Marigold's pupils shrank suddenly, teleport. Such a fast speed. As Luo Tae and Hancock appeared on the ship of the Nine Snakes pirates in an instant, everyone on the ship was inevitably surprised again. Because Santansania had just told them about going to sea, everyone seemed very active. Ah, Lady Snake, Lady Snake, we are ready. Good afternoon, Lady Snake. But when they saw Hancock still holding Luo Tae's arm, their expressions were a little unnatural. Hancock looked happy and explained, this is my husband, Luo Tae. Nani. Everyone's jaws almost smashed through the deck. However, Hancock did not explain too much, Lady Luo Tae, 
Let's go. Marigold stay at Nine Snakes Island to guard the house. Luo Te looked around and said, Everyone get ready, we will take off soon. Everyone tilted their heads, obviously feeling that there was something wrong with their ears. But Luo Te explained to everyone again, saying that he would take them to Sky Island, and everyone understood. However, everyone was a little curious about how Luo Te would raise the ship to a high altitude. Luo Te stomped his right foot slightly, and the whole ship slowly began to rise. It's really, it's really lifted off. We really flew up. Some people rubbed their eyes in disbelief, and after repeated confirmation, they looked at Luo Te in disbelief. I, our ship is really flying in the sky. Luo Te didn't care how wonderful everyone's expressions were, but reached out and took out a permanent pointer from his arms. After checking the direction and confirming that it was correct, he took Hancock's hand and came to the bow. The setting sun bloomed its last light and heat on the edge of the earth. The clouds were burned into pieces of golden stickers, sticking to the sky. The sea under the setting sun was sparkling, and from time to time there were sea kings looking up, curiously admiring the pirate ship flying in the sky. Seagulls were playing in groups, diving into the sea from time to time, picking up big fish. So beautiful, Hancock was also touched by the dreamy scenery in front of her, and she gently leaned her head on Luote's shoulder. In fact, the scenery has not changed, it has always been so beautiful, but she didn't have the heart to appreciate it before. Now not only is the emblem on her body gone, but she also has a lover by her side. The sunset left their backs on the deck, long and long. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 93, The Nine Snakes Pirates Arrive in Shaw Country. The pirate ship passed through the clouds, and the moisture brushed on the face, and the water vapor condensed into small crystals on Hancock's eyelashes. The scenery in front of him was also foggy. After a while, the scene in front of him suddenly became clear, and the clouds were stepped on. The sunset also appeared on the same horizontal line. The orange sea of clouds rolled. Wow, Master Luo Te, is this the sky? Hancock hugged Luo Te's arm, his beautiful eyes shining. Many female warriors behind him were also amazed. As Master Luo Te's sky island on it. Is there really an island on it? Is it supported by the clouds? It's impossible, how can the clouds support the island? Hearing the discussions of the people behind him, Luo Te did not explain, because the existence of Sky Island was an incredible thing. They would only believe it when they really saw it. Luo Te controlled the nine snakes to move forward at a high speed, which was no different from sailing in the sea. Waves were also swaying wherever the pirate ship passed. Gradually, a magnificent archipelago appeared in front of everyone. I saw islands scattered in the clouds. This, as this Sky Island, as this Lord Luo Te's kingdom. How spectacular. Super Heart Net. Activated. Luo Te. Saw, that various constructions were in full swing on the island. Let's go, I'll show you Sky Island. Everyone reacted after hearing Luo Te speak. Rubbing his eyes frantically, he looked at Sky Island in front of him, and then looked at the clouds under the boat. Only then was he sure that this was really the sky. Even Hancock's beautiful eyes flickered frequently, and he was stunned by the beautiful scenery in front of him. Lord Luo. Is this your country? Luo Te rubbed her hair lovingly, of course, this is our country. Hearing the word, R, Hancock's pretty face was like the red clouds in the sky, which was very beautiful. For a moment, Luo Te's heart stopped for a beat. At this time, Santansania said, I, daughter we dead. This sentence scared the other warriors, and they all looked puzzled. Hearing this, Luo Te couldn't help but smile. It seemed that someone had said something like this when they first came to Sky Island. Just as he was about to explain to everyone, a warning voice sounded. Who are you? This is the territory of Shaw Country. Outsiders need to register to enter. Luo Te's mouth curled up. However, before everyone took a fighting stance, a giant ancient pterosaur had already arrived on the Nine Snakes. Everyone's pupils shrank suddenly, what a fast speed. Except for Hancock and Luo Te, almost no one on the ship reacted. As this a dinosaur, as this place not developed yet, how can there be such a creature as a dinosaur? What a terrifying creature. Is this a creature in Lord Luo Te's territory? What a powerful momentum. Santansania quickly transformed into a giant python and confronted the pterosaur as if facing a great enemy. The venom had already dripped from the fangs onto the deck, instantly melting a hole in the deck. The pterosaur turned into a human and knelt on one knee in front of Luo Te. Welcome home, King. Hancock murmured, this is zone devil fruit ancient species. What? Everyone was shocked. They had never heard of devil fruit an ancient species. They had no idea what this was but they were uneducated and could only say, F.K. Santansania realized that the man had called Luo Te, King, just now. He must be the guard of this country. Luo Te reached out and lifted the man up from the air. Wepa, these are our own people. The person who came was naturally Wepa. Luo Te looked Wepa up and down, his face full of satisfaction. In his previous life, he knew that this man had almost the same strength as Zoro. After getting the devil fruit and learning hockey, he was naturally even more powerful. Based on the current strength, 
he is at least as strong as the vice admiral of the naval headquarters. Weppa looked up at the king, thinking that his strength had improved greatly and at least he could help him. But at present, he still couldn't see Luo Te's strength clearly, even because he learned observation hockey. Luo Te gave him the feeling that he was as deep as the abyss. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but clench his fists. He made up his mind to practice well, at least to help Luo Te in the future when there was a big event. Lord Luo Te, are you here to supervise? Luo Te replied, I just came back to take a look and take Hancock and the others to visit where they will live in the future. Hearing this, Wei Pa began to look at the warriors on the Nine Snakes. Shin Chunin couldn't help but marvel. Although they were all women, they were very strong. At least more than half of them were stronger than the guards. King, let me take you to see the progress of Sky Island. Luo Te shook his head, I'll take a look myself. You should have a lot of things to do. Wei Pa nodded to Luo Te and turned into a pterosaur and flew to Sky Island. Luo Te admired Wei Pa character very much. He never dragged his feet and would not be polite. Seeing Wei Pa leave, Santansania lifted the transformation. Luo Te waved his hand and raised the Nine Snakes to Sky Island. Along the way, they saw many things different from Nine Snake Island, even new things that they had never seen on other islands. They saw the school with the sound of reading. Hancock was a little confused and asked, Lord Luo Te, what is this? Seeing that everyone looked confused, Luo Te explained to everyone, This is called a school. School. Luo Te nodded, School is a place where children in Sha can systematically learn writing, combat skills, farming skills, hockey, etc. This. Everyone's eyes widened when they heard this. They had never thought that there was such a thing. You don't need to think about it carefully to know how powerful the backbone of the entire Shaw country will be when these children grow up. Moreover, childhood is also the most efficient period for learning things. Starting education at this time can greatly develop their potential. What is this? This is the Attorney General's office, where criminals are tried, including. What is this? This is the Research Institute, used for research and invention. What is this? After taking everyone to almost the entire Sky Island, Luo Te slowly brought the Nine Snakes to the center. And the people on the ship were still immersed in the various policies of Shah. As this the territory of Lord Luo Te, Shah country. It would be nice if we could live here. Even New Mother was in shock. She saw almost every citizen, all of whom had smiles on their faces, and she knew that was happiness from the heart. Along the way, many guards greeted Luo Te enthusiastically. And Luo Te responded one by one, without any airs. If the citizens of Amazon Lily live in such an environment in the future, they will definitely be very happy. The most important thing is that there is almost no need to worry about being discovered by the world government. She looked back at the faces of the warriors and found that they were almost all expecting. Welcome my king. Just as Luo Te stopped the nine snakes at the shrine square, a voice sounded. Luo Te led Hancock down the boat slowly. Lackey, I said that Shaw country does not need to salute like this. As he said that, Luo Te waved his hand and lifted Lackey up in the air. Lackey looked at Luo Te, but caught a glimpse of Hancock beside him, King, who is this? Hancock leaned against Luo Te with a happy face, I am the wife of Lord Luo Te. What? Lackey looked incredulous, what about Nami Chan, Robin Chan, and Linger Chan? Luo Te was about to explain when he felt a chill down his spine. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 94, Sabayati Archipelago. Luo Te turned around slowly and met Hancock's tearful eyes. He touched his head, not knowing how to explain to Hancock. He glanced at Lackey inconspicuously and greeted her in his heart. Why do you mention this when you have nothing to do? Isn't this going to cause trouble in your own backyard? Ahem, ahem. Then, that, Nami, Robin and Linger are all members of our Luo Te pirates. Hearing Luo Te's words, Lackey pursed her lips inconspicuously. Our king is really sentimental, I wonder how he will deal with the relationship between these people. Single quote. Thinking of this, she thought of Wepa again, if Wepa dares to be so sentimental, I will definitely let him know the feeling of a crotch wind. Single quote. At this time, Wepa, who was patrolling over Sky Island, felt a chill in his lower body and couldn't help but squeeze his legs together, did the temperature drop today? A chu. Hancock's eyes turned. Even though she was a love-brained person, she believed everything about Luo Te unconditionally, but she was not stupid. Knowing that there are some things, Luo Te did not tell her. But she believed that as long as the time came, Luo Te would confess to her. She tightened her hand around Luo Te's arm. As the owner of the electromagnetic fruit, Luo Te naturally knew what Hancock was thinking. But now he was not ready, so he could only laugh, as this the new palace. It looks extremely luxurious. He pointed to the large attic behind that was half built. Lackey said proudly, yes, this is the palace I designed. Luo Te looked at the building behind, and looked up and down at Lackey, you mean you designed this building? Yes, how about it? It's okay. After getting Lackey's affirmative answer, Luo Te couldn't help but think highly of this woman. When I read comics in my previous life, I only knew that this woman was brave but not strong. 
I didn't know that she actually had such a specialty. Good, good. Then we will build a design institute next to the guard institute and you will be the director. This way, you and Weipa will be close. Hearing Luo Tae's praise, Laki was proud at first, but when she heard the second half of the sentence, her face turned red. My lord king, please don't talk nonsense. Although she said this, her heart was particularly sweet. By the way, my lord king, the palace has not been built yet. Please bear with it and live on the boat tonight. After saying this, she looked at Luo Tae apologetically. Luo Tae shook his head to indicate that it was okay. After telling Hancock about the special nature of his ability and the role of the electromagnetic barrier, the two naturally had in-depth exchanges until the early morning. Luo Tae didn't let Hancock go until she begged for mercy. This also made Hancock almost unable to get out of bed. A temporary meeting room was built in the square. Luo Tae didn't plan to hold any meetings. What he hated most in his previous life was meetings, and in his previous life, meetings were often held after get-off work. However, under Gan Fuer's strong invitation, Luo Tae had no choice. He scanned the faces of the crowd, some familiar, some unfamiliar, but everyone looked at him at the same time. In half a year at most, we can move to the new world. Hearing Luo Tae's words, Gan Fuer and others were very excited. They knew that by then, Sha would truly stand in the world. It was also the time to test the fruits of their labor. Some people were worried, most of whom were high-level officials of Gai Island. One of the middle-aged men with sword eyebrows and starry eyes said, King, isn't it a bit too hasty for us to go to the New World so early? As soon as this was said, it was unanimously recognized by the other participants of Gai Island. After such a long time under the influence of Luo Tae's various policies, they have already taken on the role of Shah's subjects. Because of these advanced concepts, they also truly believe in Luo Tae, the king. But they know the cruelty of the New World. They think that going to the New World with Shah's current strength is like a sheep among wolves. Luo Tae naturally understood what they were worried about. I know your concerns. You may not know our strength in the world. Since we are going to move Xiaoguo to the New World, I will definitely make full preparations. Do you know the four emperors? When they heard this question, they all nodded. Although they were in paradise, as the leaders of an island, they must have known about those famous pirates. Knowing that they were the kings who dominated the entire New World. Luo Tae saw fear in their eyes and said, the New World has been completely divided up by the four emperors. We want to gain a foothold in the New World. We have to defeat one or several four emperors and take their territory for ourselves. So, I will accomplish this goal within half a year. After saying that, he looked at everyone with interest. Nani. Defeat the four emperors. They believed in their king, but they felt that the goal of defeating the four emperors was still a bit reluctant. Luo Tae did not show his strength to everyone, because they did not know how strong the four emperors were, nor how strong they were. Now there is no chance to show his strength at all. In the next meeting, Luo Tae did not focus on this topic again, but turned the topic to people's livelihood. A meeting lasted until the afternoon. Luo Tae also dragged his somewhat tired body back to the Nine Snakes. Sitting in the small conference room of the Nine Snakes, Hancock was massaging his shoulders. New Mother spoke first. Lord Luo Tae, I agree to join the entire Amazon Lily under your banner and move the Nine Snake Island to Sky Island. The other warriors only learned about this proposal last night, but they were quite positive. Not only because Hancock actively supported it, but after a day of understanding, they also discovered the good of Xiaoguo. Naturally, they agreed with both hands. Luo Tae looked around and was very satisfied. He knew that as long as these people agreed, then the entire Amazon Lily would agree, and there would be no problem. New Mother said, when are we going to move the Nine Snake Island up? Hearing this, Luo Tae tilted his head and focused his eyes on Hancock. Hancock. Meow, you are the king of a country and a Shichibukai. You can't just join blindly because of our relationship. You have to think about it. Hancock smiled gently and said, Lord Luo Tae, I have certainly considered it. The seven warlords of the sea are actually the running dogs of the world government. I don't want to take a position at all, but I have to do this for the country. But now I don't have to worry. After the Nine Snake Island is moved up, no one will come to harass me. I don't have to do something that makes me sick to protect the country. This is the best of both worlds. Hearing Hancock's words, Luo Tae couldn't help rubbing his head, for so many years, in order to protect the country, I forced myself to be a Shichibukai. It's hard work. Okay, then we will go back to Qinghai now and move the Nine Snake Island up. After that, he went to say hello to Gan Fuer and others and took the Nine Snakes down the Sky Island. Dot dot dot. Bo, bo, bo. The resin bubbles shone with golden light in the sunset, flying between dozens of tall giant mangroves. They rose to the sky and burst one by one. Lord Luo Tae, aren't we going to Nine Snake Island? Why are we in Sabayati Archipelago? A warrior asked. Luo Tae touched his head, well, I need a partner to move Nine Snake Island, and they are all on this island. Before Luo Tae finished speaking, he sensed three electromagnetic waves coming towards him quickly in his, super heart net. Luo Tae, why did you come just now? 
I missed you so much. A white cloud turned into Nami and hung directly on Luo Te's body, and her red lips were also printed on his face. Nani. When the people of the Nine Snake Pirates saw this scene, their chins fell directly to the ground. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 95. Four Women, One Drama. Before everyone was surprised, they saw a flame that turned into Ling'er and hung on the other side of Luo Te. After a while, a burst of Sakura fell in front of Luo Te, and a figure gradually emerged among the petals. It was Robin. At this time, Robin only had a happy smile on her face. However, she missed Luo Te as much as Nami and Ling'er, and even more than Nami and Ling'er. But she didn't hang on Luo Te directly like Nami and Ling'er. Although she wanted to, she couldn't do so because of her years of reservedness. The atmosphere at this time was a little subtle. There was a person hanging on each side of Luo Te, Robin in front and Hancock behind. Seeing this, everyone on Nine Snake Island looked away and pretended not to see this scene. But New Mother looked deeply at Luo Te's back, sighing in her heart, it was really as she imagined. But she originally thought that Luo Te had at most one or two women outside, but she never thought that there were three besides Hancock. She couldn't help but feel worried about Hancock. Although the relationship between the two seemed to be quite tense, she really valued Hancock as her own daughter. Naturally, she didn't want Hancock to be wronged. Even if Hancock didn't take a step back, if Hancock couldn't occupy a relatively important position in Luo Te's heart, then the Nine Snake Island would naturally not be valued by Luo Te. She began to struggle now, not knowing whether it was the right decision to hand over the Nine Snake Island to Luo Te. But she couldn't intervene in the current situation. She could only look away again. That, newborn, the scenery of Sabayati Archipelago seems to have not changed much. I remember it was still so beautiful when we came here last time. Santansania laughed aside and took the opportunity to say some irrelevant words to Newborn to ease the embarrassment. Although she was Hancock's sister, she was also worried about Hancock's situation. But as an emotional novice, she didn't know what to do in this situation. Luo Te was now in great pain, and he took Nami and Ling'er off his body. Looking at the four girls, they didn't know what to do for a moment, but all four girls cast questioning eyes at Luo Te. Luo Te could only bite the bullet and say, I, I will introduce you to each other. Hearing this, Nami and the other two began to look at Hancock on the side, and they all kept silent. Hancock's beautiful face and ultimate figure made them feel quite amazing. They couldn't help but compare him with themselves. Luo Te pointed at Hancock and said, This is Boa Hancock, the current emperor of the Amazon Lily Kingdom, one of the seven warlords of the sea, and the captain of the nine snake pirates. Hearing Luo Te's introduction, Nami and Ling'er suddenly realized that the beauty in front of them was actually the world's number one beauty, seven warlords of the sea Boa Hancock. She was indeed quite beautiful, and Nami puffed out her chest a little unconvinced. After some comparison, it was like a deflated ball, holding her chest. This is Ling'er, Yaimila Ling'er, the cook on my ship. This is Nami, our navigator. This is Nico Robin, the historian on the ship. After the introduction, Luo Te thought Hancock would do her signature backbend, but surprisingly she didn't do it. Instead, she greeted politely, Hello, I'm Boa Hancock, the wife of Lord Luo Te. Nani. Nami and Ling'er's eyes condensed, looking at Luo Te with unfriendly expressions. Even Robin's pupils shrank, looking at Luo Te with a scrutinizing look, when did Captain Luo Te and Captain Hancock get married, why didn't they inform us? Luo Te is now in a state of confusion, and his heart is full of complaints about Hancock. Dear mother, can you please stop making trouble? If eyes can kill, I should have died thousands of times. He can only explain. I. We are not married. As soon as these words came out, Hancock's beautiful eyes were instantly filled with mist. Luo Te quickly added, Hancock, I, we will get married. As three pairs of cold eyes hit him, he quickly said, Robin, we will get married too. Of course there are Ling'er and Nami. Robin looked at Luo Te with interest, oh, our captain Luo Te is quite ambitious. Although her tone was very relaxed and gentle, Luo Te heard the knife hidden in her words. Although Ling'er and Nami still had an unforgiving expression on their faces, they were relieved in their hearts. They have always loved Luo Te, and Robin walked ahead of them, and they were already unhappy. Now there is a world's most beautiful woman. This made them angry. And now that they heard Luo Te say that he wanted to marry them, the hanging heart was finally put down. They no longer blamed Luo Te for finding another woman. Luo Te scratched his head frantically, and for a moment he was so anxious that he didn't know what to say. Don't pay attention to this big bad guy, let's go shopping. Ling Er didn't care what Luo Te wanted to explain, and pulled Hancock and others to run towards the island. Luo Te was left alone in a daze. What's going on? Single quote. It seemed like he was being executed just now, how come he went shopping in the blink of an eye? But it's good this way, he no longer has to be judged by them like a prisoner. Huh. Instantly he felt that he had finally regained the right to breathe, and the air became less sticky. He looked back at the people on the Nine Snakes, do you want to go to the island together? Nupo and others shook their heads. Luo Te no longer forced it, 
he also didn't like a large group of people following him. He took out a whistle from his arms and handed it to Nu Po. Okay, take this whistle, blow it when you encounter any problems and I will appear. Nu Po took the whistle and put it in her pocket. Seeing this, Luo Te disappeared in an instant, but his voice remained in the air. You are also my people. With me here, you can walk around the island at will without worrying about safety. New mother said, let's go. Since Luo Te said so, we don't have to be polite. Besides, we haven't had a good walk for a long time. Dot dot dot. Island no. 13. Shaki's blackmail bar. Luo Te's figure emerged outside the door. Bang. A twisted figure covered in blood flew out of the door and fell to the ground. Seeing this scene, Luo Te couldn't help but wipe his cold sweat. It's really a blackmail bar. His, super heart net, was activated, and he felt something, and his mouth corners curled up. Dong dong dong. Come in. Hearing the voice coming from inside, Luo Te gently pushed the door and walked in. Ah, Wowong Luo Te, what wind brought you here? Luo Te looked in the direction of the voice and saw a middle-aged woman with short hair. The woman was wiping the blood stains on her hands with a handkerchief. Obviously, the person who was just thrown out was the hand of this woman. Aunt Sha Chi, I just passed by here and wanted to see if Uncle Rayleigh was here. Sha Chi looked at Luo Te for a long time, and shouted to the screen behind him, Rayleigh, I'm looking for you. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 96. Rayleigh and Dorag. I wonder what Luo Te wants to talk to me about. Looking at the gray-haired old man in front of him, Luo Te nodded secretly. He could feel the powerful momentum from the old man. As expected of the vice captain of the Pirate King's ship, although he is old, his strength should not be underestimated. Single quote. When Luo Te looked at Rayleigh, Rayleigh was also looking at Luo Te secretly. Rayleigh couldn't help but be shocked. This young man was more powerful than he thought. It was definitely more than three billion. Now Luo Te gave him the feeling of Roger in the past. He didn't quite believe that a person of this age could have such a strong strength. If this was the case, then the future achievements were simply unimaginable. I just passed by here and came to pay my respects to the vice captain of the Pirate King. Rayleigh shook his head when he heard it, I'm just a retired person, there's nothing to see. He wouldn't be surprised that Luo Te knew he was the vice captain of Roger, the Pirate King. After all, regardless of age, Luo Te had no it alls like Crocodile and Robin. But he still couldn't make up his mind what Luo Te wanted to do with him. He probably didn't come just to see him. But based on Luo Te's current attitude, he didn't think he was looking for trouble. What exactly he wanted to do depended on what Luo Te said next. Luo Te naturally knew the doubts in Rayleigh's heart and didn't intend to hide it. He smiled and said, I didn't come to you just to visit you. I came to discuss something with you. Rayleigh frowned, oh, what's the matter? Can you tell me? Luo Te nodded and said, there may be a big event in more than a year. I hope you can help me then. He didn't know if there would be a summit war. He gave the gold gold fruit to Ace and taught Ace hockey. And now his strength must be very strong, and it is possible that he will not lose to Blackbeard. But he was not very optimistic. After all, Blackbeard once left scars on red-haired Shanks. Ace should not be stronger than Shanks, so he was not sure and could only book Rayleigh in first. Not to mention that he was planning to declare war on the world government at that time, Ace was still his apprentice, and he couldn't let him go no matter what. By then, Rayleigh would be tied to their Luote pirates, and it would be hard for him not to contribute when dealing with world conquest. Hearing this, Rayleigh frowned even more tightly, and he was extremely confused. Could this young man tell fortunes? Or was the big event in more than a year initiated by Luote? Oh, I don't know what big event it is. My old bones can't stand the tossing, and I shouldn't be able to help brother Luote. Rayleigh's implication was already very obvious. He just wanted to spend his old age in peace and didn't want to wade into some muddy waters that he didn't know the depth of. Luo Te pulled the corner of his mouth and thought to himself, this cautious old guy. But the smile on his face never diminished, of course I won't ask Rayleigh San to do something against his own heart, and it won't be a bad thing. How about it? Rayleigh was almost jumping up and down. Just tell me the matter directly, don't laugh with me here, don't say anything, how can you let me agree? Seeing that Rayleigh did not answer, Luo Te said again, it is still unknown whether that incident will happen. But when it really happens, I will come to you and tell you the reason at that time. I believe you will not refuse. Rayleigh did not comment on this, but responded. Then let's talk about it when the time comes. Luo Te nodded, then I will leave first. After all, I have been here and have been seen by someone with ulterior motives, which may disturb your business. After that, he stood up and walked towards the door. Because he had achieved what he wanted, he said such words to Rayleigh here without hoping to get a direct answer from Rayleigh. But the seeds have been planted, he believes that if such an incident really happens, he will invite Rayleigh again, and he will be mentally prepared. Looking at Luo Te's back as he went out, Rayleigh and Sha Chi looked at each other. Rayleigh, what do you mean by Luo Te? Sha Chi said as he put out his cigarette butt in the ashtray. Rayleigh shook her head, 
I don't know, but I can feel that Luote has no bad intentions, or at least no bad intentions for us at the moment. Sha Chi took out another cigarette from his pocket and lit it, so what do you mean? Although she didn't know what the big event Luote was talking about, it would not be a simple matter for him to come and invite Rayleigh in person. She hoped that Rayleigh could have a quiet and happy old age, instead of picking up the knife in his hand to fight on the battlefield again. By then, she would be a widow, although now Rayleigh often goes out for a long time without going home. Rayleigh shook her head, I don't know either. From his tone, I know that I will definitely not refuse after I know, so I don't know yet. Dot dot dot. Luote went out and sensed the location of Nami and others. Then he walked slowly towards them. Five emperors Luote, can we talk? Luote turned his head to the source of the voice and saw a man in a dark green cloak standing on the corner of the street. Seeing the man dressed like this, he frowned and had a guess about the man. Oh, what do we have to talk about Monkey D? Dorag. Hearing Luote call out this name without any concealment, the figure paused. It's not convenient to talk here, let's find a cafe. This scene naturally did not escape Luote's eyes. Luote's mouth curled up an arc, and it seemed that the person who came was Dorag. And he had guessed that Dorag came to him for the purpose of asking him to join the revolutionary army, or to find him to cooperate. But no matter what the intention was, he himself wanted to talk to the leader of the revolutionary army. So he just hesitated for a while and followed Dorag. In just a moment, the two came to a cafe one after another. Dorag said something to the front desk, and then a waiter came and took the two to the kitchen. The two came to the door of the kitchen, and the waiter lifted the curtain. Immediately afterwards, Dorag walked in first. Looking at the room with a different view in front of him, Luote's mouth shrank. It was so mysterious, just like a secret base where agents from the previous life gathered. And now there sat a young man dressed in black, wearing a black magic hat on his head and holding a water pipe in his hand. Luote was no stranger to this man. This young man was naturally Luffy and Ace's sworn brother, Sabo. There was also a beautiful girl with orange hair standing next to Sabo. Obviously, she was Sabo's designated girlfriend, Crawl. Seeing Dragon walk into the room, Sabo stood up and said, Mr. Long, you are here. Then he looked at Luote, I guess this is Luote, the most famous of the five emperors at present. Luote nodded in response, but secretly looked at Sabo. It must be said that Sabo, who grew up in the revolutionary army base, is ridiculously strong. Two years ago in the previous life, Sabo was definitely much stronger than Ace and Luffy of the same period. But now it is still unknown who is stronger among the three. Dorag lifted his cloak, revealing a face with a strange tattoo on the left side. Lord Luote, please take a seat. Luote nodded and sat down. Kral brought four cups of coffee, Luote reached out and took a cup of coffee and said. What do you want to talk to me about, Mr. Long, the leader of the revolutionary army? Dot 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 dot. Chapter 97. Talking with the revolutionary army. Dorag also reached out to take a cup of coffee, took a sip, and said, I wonder if Luote is interested in joining our revolutionary army. Sure enough, Luote also took a sip of coffee, and the faint bitterness of the coffee filled his mouth. The memories of drinking coffee while working overtime in the previous life came to his mind. He also forgot to answer Dorag's question. Seeing Luote silent, Dorag was also very patient and waited. He thought Luote was considering this proposal. How could he know that Luote was complaining about those hateful bosses in the previous life? Not only did they not receive overtime pay for overtime, but they also had to hold meetings frequently. In order to make them feel at ease working overtime, the boss would put a coffee machine in the company, under the guise of seeking benefits for everyone. In fact, it was to keep everyone excited about working overtime. After a while, Luote came back to his senses, oh, by the way, what did Mr. Dorag say? Hearing Luote's words, Dorag realized that Luote's silence just now was not thinking about his proposal. However, he was not angry, and still said patiently, I want Lord Luote to join the revolutionary army. Luote touched his chin, forget it, I don't want to join the revolutionary army. Sabo and Kral were actually a little angry. Their leader talked for a long time, but they didn't hear it. And the final answer was still not agreeing to join. Luote naturally saw the micro-expressions of the two people, knowing that they would definitely be angry because of his actions just now. For Luote's answer, Dorag was not surprised. After all, a being of this level would not easily be inferior to others. Then let's talk about cooperation. Hearing this, Luote did not answer directly, but asked back, Dorag-san, how many years do you think it will take to overthrow the world government based on the current progress of your revolutionary army? Dorag didn't expect Luote to ask him this question, and he fell silent for a while. In fact, he himself had no idea. Even if I can't achieve this goal in my lifetime, there is Sabo. If Sabo can't accomplish it, there is the next generation. Luote shook his head, don't you think your efficiency is too low? And you think too simply of the world government. Dorag frowned and looked at the young man who was only 18 years old. 
Somewhat amazed at Luo Tei's maturity and confidence, he felt that he was not facing a young man, but a veteran who had been through many battles. Although Luo Tei said this with a bit of contempt for the revolutionary army, he knew that this was the fact. However, he could sit in the position of the leader of an organization, so he would not be hit by it. He changed into a student-like look, please tell me what you think, Lord Luo Tei. Luo Tei took a sip of coffee and said, everything you do is under the surveillance of the world government. They just don't care. Otherwise, do you think you can rebellion in these countries without restraint? Dorag frowned when he heard this. He could also guess that the strength of the world government must be more than what it seems on the surface. But from what Luo Tei said, he still underestimated the strength of the world government. Savo on the side couldn't help but said, Luo Tei, right. You are about the same age as me, but you are quite arrogant. I wonder how strong you are. Luo Tei looked over and admired him. This is the temperament that people of this age should have. Oh, who is this? Dorag looked at Luo Tei with an apologetic look on his face, please don't mind, Lord Luo Tei. This is the chief of staff of our revolutionary army, Sabo. Luo Tei touched his chin, oh, so you are the chief of staff of the revolutionary army. You can always think about your organization, which is really admirable. You think I bullied you, so what are you going to do? Sabo opened his mouth to speak, but felt a pressure on his shoulder. He turned his head and saw Luo Tei leaning on his chair, with his arm on his shoulder. He couldn't help but shrink his pupils, such a fast speed. Just when Sabo was about to get up, he felt that his body was heavy and couldn't get up. He was horrified because the faint momentum coming from Luo Tei was even stronger than the leader. Dorag was also extremely shocked. He didn't see how Luo Tei moved at all. He wondered secretly, teleport. I really underestimated this young man. He now had to re-examine Luo Tei and put Luo Tei on the same level. Luo Tei said, I'm not attacking you, I'm just telling you the truth. Don't think I'm targeting you on purpose. He patted Sabo's shoulder and his figure instantly appeared in the previous position. Sabo felt that the control of his body had returned to him. His face was very pale and sweat oozed from his temples. Dorag also saw Sabo's abnormality and knew that Sabo was not a person who would easily fall into trouble. But Luo Tei just leaned on him lightly and made Sabo unable to move. He thought he couldn't do such a terrifying strength. Luo Tei showed this skill a little bit, which was actually the ability after his devil fruit awakened two days ago. That is, he can not only control the electromagnetic force of the objects he touches, but also the electromagnetic force of the creatures he touches. Just now, he changed the electromagnetic force between Sabo and the surroundings by touching Sabo. So as to achieve the effect of making Sabo unable to move. Although it was the first time to use it, it was not bad at present. He said at this time, even I dare not say that I understand the full strength of the world government. He looked up at Dragon opposite him and said, Mr. Dragon, let's talk about cooperation now, but the cooperation here may be different from what you think. Dragon nodded to signal Luo Tei to continue, he also wanted to hear what the cooperation was like from the young man. I also want to overthrow this world and establish a new system. What? Hearing Luo Tei's words, Dragon and the other two were stunned. They didn't expect that Luo Tei, as a pirate, would have such an ideal. I know you may not believe it, but I have already started to do so, and it has been very effective. My method is at least more effective than your revolutionary armies. Klar retorted. How do you know that our method is not as effective as yours? We have successfully freed many kingdoms from the control of the world government. Luo Tei shook his head. Let me ask you, have the lives of the liberated kingdom residents changed from before? Klar looked up and said seriously. Why not? At least they don't have to pay the sky gold. Luo Tei stretched out a finger and shook it. Your purpose of overthrowing the world government is nothing more than to make people have a better life, not be oppressed, not have to pay taxes, etc but you haven't solved the fundamental problem. Klar wanted to say something, but was stopped by Dorag, what do you think, Lord Luo Tei? Dot 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 dot. Chapter 98. Challenge from Sabo. Sabo and Klar changed to a curious look. However, unlike Dorag, they thought Luo Tei was just bragging. Luo Tei took in the expressions of the three people and naturally knew their inner thoughts. If you want to solve this problem fundamentally, the most important thing is to make the people at the bottom feel happy from the basic life. Happiness. Sabo and Klar tilted their heads in confusion, but after a while, they nodded, knowing that Luo Tei was telling the truth. After getting the approval of the three, Luo Tei continued, Then do you know who is the biggest opponent that prevents people from getting happiness? This time, not only Sabo and Klar, but even Dorag shook his head to show that he didn't know. That is power. Hearing Luo Tei's point of view, Sabo and Klar looked confused, while Dorag nodded with some understanding. You have to know that the core of a kingdom or an organization is not the power and leadership inside. It is precisely those most basic people. Hearing this, Dorag's eyes became brighter and brighter. Sabo and Klar now knew what Luo Tei meant even if they were stupid. So, the key to making the basic people happy is to reduce their burden and ensure their own vital interests. Drag couldn't help but take out a pen and paper from the side and started recording. 
However, what was waiting for him was. There are many details to be done here, so I won't elaborate on them one by one. If I have the opportunity to take you to see my kingdom, you will naturally understand the difference between what I do and what you do. Drag's pen stopped recording from then on, then I will trouble Lord Luo Te at that time. Luo Te swallowed the last sip of coffee and said, no problem, let's talk about cooperation now. Drag's eyes lit up, he had given up on cooperating with Luo Te, but Luo Te brought it up. He nodded quickly, okay. However, the cooperation Luo Te talked about was not the same as what he had in mind, our Luo Te pirates will definitely have a decisive battle with the world government in the end. At that time, I hope that your revolutionary army can stand on the same front with us. Huh, Drag thought Luo Te would ask for a high price, or let the revolutionary army become a subsidiary of the Luo Te pirates. The result is this, he looked unconvinced and asked, is that all? Luo Te tilted his head and thought seriously, oh, there's more. He glanced at the three people and said lightly, I hope your revolutionary army won't interfere with the actions of our Luo Te pirates. Hearing this, Drago's heart sank. Luo Te's words were obviously full of warnings. But he didn't know what Luo Te was talking about, so he could only ask, I don't know what Luo Te is referring to. Luo Te scratched the back of his head, actually, I don't know how to explain it. I'll tell you when we meet. Clark couldn't help rolling his eyes and muttered softly, it's better not to say it. Although the voice was so low that even Sabo beside him couldn't hear it clearly, Luo Te certainly heard it. He could only spread his hands and said, it's hard to explain it now. You will know when you come to visit my country. Dorogu couldn't help asking, when will Lord Luo Te have time to take us to visit your capital? Luo Te rolled his eyes and said, I will take you to see it when I have established a foothold in New World. I will definitely not let you down. Dorogu's heart condensed. Sure enough, only New World can match people of this level on their battlefield. Luo Te clapped his hands and stood up. Okay, I've said everything I should say. I'll leave first. I wish us a happy cooperation. Seeing this, Dorag also stood up. I'll take you out. Sabo and Linger also stood up. Luo Te, I want to know how strong you are. Luo Te turned around and met Sabo's eyes full of fighting spirit. He sighed in his heart. Can't you bear it anymore? He nodded to Sabo and said, Let's go, let me show you the world's best fighting power. Klar rolled his eyes when he heard Luo Te's slightly showy words. Dot dot dot. Sabo. Right. Go ahead. In an empty field, Luo Te and Sabo stood face to face. Sabo was also not polite. Armament hockey was wrapped around the water pipe, and the whole water pipe suddenly became as black as ink. Be careful. After saying that, he kicked his legs hard, stepped out a huge hole in the ground, and rushed towards Luo Te at a high speed. Luo Te stood there without dodging, letting the water pipe hit his head. Soon, the black water pipe and Luo Te's head came into close contact. There was only a bang, sound, and a lot of sparks appeared between the water pipe and Luo Te's head. And Sabo felt that he was not hitting his head, but it was like hitting the hard sea stone. What? He looked unbelievable. Although the attack just now was only a test, even the leader did not dare to take it head on. But this Luo Te not only caught it with his head, but also seemed to be very relaxed. He took advantage of the force to do a backflip and fell back to the ground again, and couldn't help but get serious. Luo Te touched his head, hum, it's a very powerful move. Do you have any more moves? Let's continue. Sabo made a dragon claw gesture with his right hand and condensed armament hockey in his hand. With a dragon breath, he grabbed Luo Te's face. Luo Te stretched out his right hand and collided with the dragon claw with just two fingers. Suddenly, an invisible shock wave spread to the surroundings. But it only lasted for a moment, and Sabo flew backwards like a kite with a broken string. It didn't stop until it crashed into the trunk of a huge mangrove. Seeing this, Klar hurriedly ran towards Sabo. And Luo Te appeared in front of Sabo one step ahead of her with an electromagnetic teleportation. He stretched out his hand to dig Sabo out of the trunk, and then teleported back to the field with Sabo. Cough cough cough. With a few coughs, blood flowed from the corner of Sabo's mouth unconsciously. Obviously, Luo Te's attack injured him badly. Clark quickly ran forward to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth, looking at Luo Te with a face full of complaints. Luo Te was embarrassed by this look, he touched his nose and didn't know what to say. Sabo looked at Luo Te who was as young as him, and couldn't help feeling a sense of being hit. He could feel the huge gap between himself and Luo Te, even bigger than the gap between him and Long. Originally thought that the report that Luo Te defeated the Siege of Three Admirals was just an exaggeration by the world government. Now it seems that Luo Te's strength is even better than that of others. Then he was puzzled again. Why did he practice hard day and night, and there was such a big gap between him and his peers? Even Mr. Long and Big Bear praised their talents. But such talents didn't seem to be worth much in front of Luo Te. Looking at Sabo with a gloomy face, Luo Te certainly knew what Sabo was thinking. As the sworn brother of his two disciples, he naturally would not hit Sabo. He comforted him, Sabo, you don't have to belittle yourself. 
My situation is different from yours. You are very strong and you are the most gifted person I have ever seen. You should be as talented as my two disciples. Sabo raised his head, you mean, you are just an old man. Luote couldn't help but punch Sabo on the head, I just turned 18 this year. Sabo was speechless, but Luote's next sentence made his eyes light up. I'm sure you know my two disciples, one is called Ace and the other is called Luffy. As he said that, Luote took out the only remaining Zone Devil fruit from the system space and handed it to Sabo. The figure disappeared on the field, leaving only an electromagnetic wave that entered Sabo's ears. You are their sworn brother. I don't have anything good, so just take this as a gift. Dot 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 dot. Chapter 99. Three-Legged Golden Crow Fruit. Sabo looked up and looked into the distance, feeling a little excited. Because along with the devil fruit, a photo was handed to him, which was a photo of Luo Tay, Luffy and Ace. Klar tilted his head and looked at Sabo, with a puzzled look on his face, what did Luo Tay say to you just now? Why did your attitude change instantly? Sabo was stunned when he heard this, it seemed that only he could hear Luo Tay's two words just now. He shook his head, stuffed the photo into his pocket, and said, he just gave me a devil fruit, saying it was a gift for meeting. He did not choose to say Luote's two words, he guessed that Luote only let him hear it, probably because he didn't want Dragon and Klar to know. What kind of devil fruit is this? Klar asked curiously, looking at the devil fruit in Sabo's hand. At this time, Dragon also appeared in front of Sabo, looking at the devil fruit in Sabo's hand. After a while, he shook his head, I don't know what this is. There seems to be no such fruit in the encyclopedia. Klar quickly reminded, Sabo, you'd better not eat it. If this devil fruit is a strange ability, your life will be ruined. Sabo did not hesitate. He knew Luote would not harm him, and he bit the devil fruit directly. Ah, uh, what a disgusting taste. Sabo couldn't help but retching as soon as he tasted it. Resisting the nausea, Sabo ate the devil fruit cleanly. Drager also looked at Sabo with some curiosity. He also wanted to know what kind of devil fruit this was. He felt that with Luote's hand, it shouldn't be a garbage devil fruit. Sabo felt his body getting hotter and hotter, and the whole person gradually radiated an extremely strong high temperature. In just a moment, the ground turned into lava, and Dragon hurriedly took Klar away from Sabo. Watching the scene of the manufacturer from a distance, Klar stretched out his hand to fan himself, it's, it's so hot, what kind of devil fruit is this Sabo-kun, it feels so strong. Drag also shook his head, I don't know, but it seems to be an extraordinary devil fruit now. Both of them stared at Sabo. Ah, Sabo-kun is burned black. Let's hurry. Before Klar finished his exclamation, he saw that Sabo had turned into a black three-legged strange bird. Drag still had a puzzled look on his face. He had never seen this species, maybe only Luote and Sabo themselves know what species this is. Klar nodded, and then said excitedly, the temperature seems to have dropped, let's go ask Sabo-kun. Sabo looked at his strange shape, not at all uncomfortable, but full of surprise. Sabo-kun, what kind of devil fruit is this? Hearing Klar's question, Sabo's voice came from the bird's beak. This is zone mythical beast bird bird fruit three-legged golden crow form. What? Mythical beast species? Klar's face was full of disbelief. Mythical beast species are even rarer than Lovia devil fruit. Drag also widened his eyes at this time. He didn't know what kind of species the three-legged golden crow was, but he knew that all mythical beast species had one or more special abilities. In a sense, it was more powerful than Lovia. He couldn't help but glance into the distance, wondering why Luote would give such an important devil fruit to a stranger he had never met. Sabo was full of gratitude to Luote in his heart. At this moment, he was actually happy that Ace and Luffy had such a powerful and generous master. He slowly put away the fruit power and gradually turned back into human form. Clark quickly ran to Sabo and hugged his arm. Hey, Sabo-kun, can you explain to us what this three-legged golden crow is? Sabo tilted his head, thought for a while, and said, the three-legged golden crow is an ancient divine bird that lives in the sun. It can control fire and even summon wind, rain, thunder and lightning. Then show us quickly. Sabo scratched his head and looked around, it's not good here. Our identities are not upright. If we are discovered by the agents of the world government. Hearing Sabo's answer, Klar directly pulled Sabo's ear, ah, what, Sabo-kun, are you impatient with me? Sabo quickly begged for mercy, no, 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 I just got the ability, so I'm definitely not familiar with it. I'll tell you first when I figure it out myself. Klar added a little more force in his hand and pulled Sabo's earlobe long, are you sure? Sabo raised his hands in surrender and quickly expressed his position, I'm sure, even the leader has to rank behind you. Hearing this, Klar let go of Sabo's poor ear, huh? That's better. Sabo rubbed his poor ears, looked at Klar's face full of resentment, and secretly complained in his heart, if you are so fierce, whoever marries you in the future will be beaten three times a day. No, I am afraid that I am the only one in the world who can tolerate it. Others may have been useless long ago. Hey, 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 what's that look in your eyes? 
Claw pretended to pull Sabo's ears again. Sabo quickly covered his ears and ran away. Luo Te, who was far away, naturally saw the situation on Sabo's side clearly. He knew that the system's products must be fine products, but he never thought that it would produce the three-legged golden crow fruit, which was a bit perverted. But he did not regret it, it was an investment. Dot dot dot. Behind a low wall a few hundred meters away from Luo Te, a marine in plain clothes was holding a Den Den Mushi. Has Luo Te appeared in Sabayati Archipelago? Have all the world nobles on the island been evacuated safely? As early as when Fire Fist and the others arrived on the island, world government agents had already sent them away. That's good. You are still responsible for monitoring the whereabouts of Luo Te and his gang. Remember not to get too close. Do what you can and pay attention to your own safety. Understood, Marshal Sengoku. The plainclothes marine quietly put away the Den Den Mushi and observed Luo Te's whereabouts. Marshal's office, Naval Headquarters Marineford. Sengoku put down the Den Den Mushi in his hand and breathed a long sigh of relief. What he was most worried about was that celestial dragons didn't believe in evil. If they ran into Luo Te and his gang on the island, it would definitely be another accident. Ha 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 ha. Those world scums with bubbles have finally met their opponents. Watch your words. This is naval headquarters, not your own home. Garp. Ha 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 ha. What's the matter? No one else heard it. Sengoku held his forehead. He really had no way to deal with this old friend who always spoke the truth. Dot dot dot. Luo Te looked at the low wall where the soldier was hiding, and disappeared in an instant. He knew what the soldier had just reported to Sengoku, but he didn't care. He didn't expect that just killing two dragon pigs would turn out like this. But it's better this way, he won't be dirty-eyed by those disgusting creatures, and he doesn't want to dirty his hands. When waiting for Luo Te's figure to appear again, he was already in front of the amusement park. Oh, isn't this our Captain Luo Te who is obsessed with marrying four beautiful women? Dot 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 dot. Chapter 100. Luo Te left out. Wow. Hancock, is this the Nine Snakes Island? It's so beautiful. Well, it's not bad, then I'll take you for a tour. Luo Te walked behind the four women, like a pet, without a sense of existence. He looked at Hancock and the other four holding hands in front of him, and couldn't help but be curious. He didn't know what happened in Sabayati Archipelago that made the relationship between these four women so good. Originally, he was worried about how to deal with the relationship between them. Now, the relationship between the four of them has improved, but he can't fit in. Luo Te didn't stay too long in Sabayati Archipelago, and Hancock and the others also knew that the longer things dragged on, the more disadvantageous it would be for Nine Snakes Island. So the women just went shopping, played in the amusement park for a while, and then came to Nine Snakes Island without stopping. By the way, this island is not open yet, and men are not allowed to enter. Sorry, hearing Hancock say that men are not allowed to enter, Beppo quickly lowered his bare head to apologize. Luo, holding the demon sword Guiku, leaned against the side of the ship of Pokong No. 1, and had no intention of getting off the ship. When Luo Te got off the ship and was about to follow, he heard Hancock's voice, Lord Luo Te, wait outside for a while. Nani, Luo Te's left foot, which had just stepped out, stopped in the air. He wondered if he had heard it wrong. That was Hancock, how could it become like this? But he could only withdraw his foot in dismay. He couldn't figure out what these little ancestors were thinking. Originally, each of them was a good girl, especially Hancock, who was simply a clingy person. Now they have changed one by one. He returned to the ship and sat down against the mast. Dot dot dot. Robin, is this really okay? Hancock looked back every three steps, and her whole heart was about to fly into Luo Te's arms. She felt that she would have difficulty breathing if she left Luo Te now. She wished she could hang on Luo Te's body as a pendant all day long. Nami said at this time. Don't look at it, men can't be spoiled, otherwise they will learn bad things. Ling Er nodded and agreed. That's right. However, Hancock's worried look did not diminish at all. As the initiator of this proposal, Robin naturally saw Hancock's reluctance and changed the subject. Hancock, you should take us to visit the scenery of Nine Snake Island. PFF. PFFT. Seeing Luo Te return to the boat in a decadent state, Babo covered his bear's mouth and couldn't help laughing. Luo heard it and quickly winked at it. Luo Te was not angry. He looked up and saw Luo and Babo staying quietly on the boat, and had no intention of getting off the boat. Looking at this man and bear, he always felt that something was wrong. After a while, he realized that two people were not with them, and couldn't help asking. I remember there were four of you, oh no, it was three people and a bear, where are the other two people? Hearing Luo Te's question, Luo and Bebo's eyes darkened. Luo Te saw the expressions of the two people and guessed that something bad must have happened. He quickly asked, what happened? Luo nodded as if he was reluctant to recall. Time goes back to the battle with the Golden Lion Pirates. Puff, puff, puff. A disgusting sound came, and Nami and others saw a tall, pale, and strange man in a lab coat appear in front of everyone. Linger couldn't help but pinch his nose, what is this strange sound? The man stopped, 
raised one foot, and turned around. He was naturally the scientist of the Sky Pirates, Ying Dij. You are Luo Tei's group, your captain has joined our Golden Lion Pirates, surrender. Robin touched his chin, why do I feel that your captain is being beaten by our captain? Ying Dij's pale face collapsed instantly, I think you can't see the situation clearly, no one in this world can defeat the Golden Lion. As soon as the voice fell, he drew out the sword at his waist and slashed at Robin. Ding! A white cloud turned into a vine and wrapped around his blade, blocking the blade's momentum and stopping two centimeters away from Robin's forehead, unable to move forward for a while. Sister Robin, leave this person to me. Nami stuck out her tongue at Robin and said so. Robin chuckled and slowly put down his hand, thank you. I've been here for a long time, no one saw it. At this time, a slightly resentful voice sounded next to him. Everyone looked over and saw a gorilla wearing a large flowered robe and a pink hat standing next to the stone. Isn't this gorilla also a cadre of Golden Lion? Luo pushed away the ghost cry in his hand, with a fighting spirit on his face. Ling Er stretched out his hand to stop him, of course, this special ingredient must be left to me to cook. After that, he turned into a flame and appeared in front of the gorilla. Are you Nico Robin, the orphan of Ohara? A woman about 2 meters and 5 meters tall twisted her waist and walked towards Robin. Robin frowned, she didn't like the feeling that everyone knew her details. Luo Tei heard Luo's memories and realized that the deaths of Shiki and Pajin were related to his battle with Golden Lion. They obviously died in the aftermath of the battle between him and Myopia. Realizing this, he felt very sorry, I'm sorry, it should be because of me and Golden Lion. Luo shook his head, Captain, don't blame yourself. This is not anyone's fault. When the four of us first went out to sea together, we were already aware that we could sink into the sea at any time. If you really want to blame someone, you can only blame me for being too weak and failing to save them. Dot 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 dot. 